Man, is episode 62 a treat. We have the tech editor for Four Wheeler Magazine, a man who has been on 10 of the Ultimate Adventures. He's the builder and brainchild behind the Ultimate CJ6, the deranged rover, and the latest Ultimate Long Range Jeep, Burn Simons. We also have one of only two people who have been on all 20 Ultimate Adventures. He's the creator and builder of the Ultimate International and the man who decides the routes for the UA, Trent McGee. This is going to be a two-parter. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> I just, you want to wear sunglasses? Perfect. Just do it for the look, bro. <laughs> 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 it's Vernie Simmons. Ver- Vernie Simmons is what I guess. We have said the worst things on here. Last week I, I talked about chopping a <laughs> off with a machete. Yeah. Nobody knows what you mouse said f- look like. <laughs> 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 oh, that's too fun. I go, so no, that's, the just, that's, that's the bar. That's the bar. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mike and Max Off Road Podcast, brought to you by Keep It Simple Off Road. I'm your host, Mike Austin. And I'm Max Krause, and we're taking you from the garage to the trail. We're over Trent's house, his shop. Yeah, I had the whole intro, and now I'm sweating like crazy. Yeah. Anyway, Trent McGee, Vern, Vernie Simons. <laughs> Simmons. <laughs> Simmons. Perfect. It's Vern Simons. You want to Vern- just take it from the top? Or? Yeah, should we just start over? No, this is it. This, this is, is perfect. This, this is, is how we roll, This bro. is a good one. It's great. Yeah. This is a good one. <laughs> so that was their intro. Why are you, why are you sweating, Mike? Yeah. Dude, I'm sweating like crazy because we turned that off. Mm. And I'm super nervous. Anyway, um, why are you nervous? I have no idea. He gets nervous just in our normal podcast room because just, my, just him and I. Yeah, I uh, calm down, Mike. It yeah. happens every single time. Episodes. What are we on? Sixty-two. And, you, and, and you're talking about doing a TV show too. Yeah, with, well, with like really with really high quality <laughs> zooming in cameras. I just want to produce the TV show. Oh, I, w- okay. I don't like okay. being in front of the camera. I like be behind the camera. So well, if if you knew a couple guys that w- like being in the limelight, right? Um, that would be good. So. We're over here because you guys are wheelers, and uh, Ultimate Adventure just happened, and it both did. of you were on it, right? It Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why we're here. <laughs> no other reason. I don't know. Somebody else better take over. All right. Go ahead, Max. <laughs> so I'm definitely, up, Mike. <laughs> a, I'm definitely a big fan of the Ultimate Adventure. You know, and I've, I've probably only been following it for like, I'd say like four or five years. But um, it's definitely a highlight of something to watch online, off-roading-wise. And, you know, um, ever since all the videos went to YouTube and then Motor Trend, it's easier and easier to watch. And, um, you know, I've definitely watched older ones, but it's very interesting because you guys have a huge assortment of different types of vehicles. You guys both have built, right, the last several years of the actual Ultimate Adventure rig. Right? Mostly mostly Vern. Mostly, mostly Vern? Vern? Okay. Is Whoa. Oh boy. Oh wow. Okay. wow. Crazy Two wiener. Two yeah. Up. yeah. Hey. Trent's dog really likes me. <laughs> um yeah, I built the last four, starting with the UA C J six D, which was uh Christian Hazel's that kind of light blue and rust yeah. colored oh, yeah. C J six. Nine thousand shifters. With nine thousand shifters. Tell us what that that drivetrain is crazy. Really? Yeah, so it's a uh Cummins R two point eight. It was a really early one too, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I think it was the first a, ones. like a yeah. pre-production one. Mm-hmm. Might have been. And then there's a Ranger Overdrive, which is basically, pardon me, I have to pet this dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Ranger Overdrive is like a uh, an overdrive, but it goes in front of the transmission, which is really weird. Yeah. Huh. So it kind of takes place of the bell housing and... It's sandwiched between the transmission. Yeah. So the input shaft on the transmission, like where the clutch usually rides, goes into the back of it, and then it has like a a big input shaft in the front with a clutch and everything on it. Okay. Really? Yeah. It's in front of the clutch for the yeah. main part of the engine? And it's that's, it, well, it's, it's that's behind one the of the engine. underdrives? Is that? It's a it's a overdrive. Oh, oh, overdrive. Yeah. It's a, yeah, but you can get it underdrive you as well. You can get it as an uh, underdrive. So but he, yeah, it's like sandwiched between the bell housing and the transmission. And itself. that's yep. one of the shifters? Or no? Mm-hmm. Yes. So wow. that has an on and off switch, basically, which is a, I don't know what the ratio is, 0.75. That sounds right. Something like that. And yeah. uh, <laughs> you want me get you a table? <laughs> Set your beer. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I like dogs. <laughs> Who doesn't? If you, that's how you can tell if somebody's good or not. If well, they don't like dogs, you don't need to be. I've met a few dogs them. that didn't like me. Oh. Yeah. No, I think we all have. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, you always so, go. So it went. Uh, Cummins R2.8, uh, Ranger Overdrive, SM420, Magnum two or Magnum uh, Underdrive. So that's uh, 
Magnum box. Magnum box with a 2.72 to 1. Mm-hmm. Right. And then a Ford 205. So 1.96 to 1. Right. So, yeah. Was it twin sticked as well? Yes. Probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah a veritable forest of shifters. Yeah. There were five shifters in it. Jeez. And the, the cool thing about that Ranger, it's kind of like a uh, old school Saturn overdrive as you can uh, – you can engage it in any gear. Hmm. Oh, okay. So you can split gears regardless of where you're at, even That's going awesome. backwards. I actually do recall an article on it that you guys had talked about something on splitting the gears and how even though the SM420, right, It like what is that, like a three or four speed with the granny low? Yeah, so that's and sort of the, the, the oldest granny transmission and it has a seven seven, seven to one first yeah that's what seven you have two right no i got the 465 oh, which would have been the next one right so it, it's like full-on bread truck i mean the yeah. thing shifts like garbage yeah, it's, it's like, like a driving a dump truck, dump truck throw. Throw. so there's no like if you're on a big incline on a hill and you need to downshift quick shift. it's no. <laughs> no okay no but that's okay. the nice thing about the ranger because you can shift that pretty quickly that's oh. a pretty quick shift nice. so if you're uh but you kind of have to plan ahead and yeah. that, that was all on a JK frame, right? With a um, an older Jeep body on yeah, it. Yeah, so uh, a friend that I met, or a guy that I met uh, locally here in Phoenix uh, had a JK frame, or, or there was a body shop where they were basically paid to swap the frame out on this JK, and there was nothing wrong with it. Like the crash bar in the front, the thing that hangs down below mm-hmm. the front bumper was... Oh. kind of beat up the one most of us cut out the thing that <laughs> everybody cuts off of a jk frame <laughs> right. was junk and it wasn't even that bad like you could have fixed it but nice. who knows insurance companies yeah. yeah why do they do what they do we don't know so they were like uh it was at a it was at a uh, body shop downtown i guess an old school tempe and they were basically like they needed to get it out of there they were they were tired of, they were it was occupying a parking spot out front, and then every night they had to carry it in. Oh, jeez. Oh, so basically, I went down there with, like, a case of beer and got the thing. And nice. uh, I didn't really have any plans for it, but, I mean, who's going to turn down a free frame like that? Yeah, that's right. a, that's a, and that's a great frame to have because a JK has every accessory ever possible. Didn't you, you know do I mean? that on another vehicle, too, though? I mean, do you use another JK on something else? No, that's the only JK frame that I've cut up, but, oh. they, but they're super awesome they're i mean so they're welded together and they're kind of a slip fit in the middle Mm -hmm. yeah so it's basically the same parts for a two-door and a four-door so if you want to stretch it or make it shorter it's super easy to yeah Yeah. and so i did end up making it a little bit shorter i don't remember the exact amount and that's the first official ua jeep that you personally built yeah so the year before that i haven't i don't even remember what the Uh, i thought you did the blazer is that when the blazer was in that little s the little red one uh, that wasn't that an was official a, UA build. Yeah, oh. that was the same year, but it wasn't an official. Oh, same build. year. Yeah. So, um, oh, I was actually right. curious about how do you guys get them done in such a short time frame, right? Isn't it usually fairly last minute? Like, let's say <laughs> yeah. less yeah. than three months, or or. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's typically about three months. Really, uh, yeah. sometimes four. It seems like we've got. <clears throat> well, we when I say we, you mostly have gotten yeah. better at it. I mean, I think the the CJ six was like down to the wire yeah um it was actually here local yeah the whole Uh, crew was was helping at the end yeah that was uh 17 and so we had all the cronies and stuff so there's a core group of guys but you guys also started in arizona right right yeah yeah, that's the only reason that worked yeah we we've started about four miles well the hotel was four miles from here we started in table mesa but first trail day was table Mesa. but um but anyway there's there's a core group of guys that are called cronies um, that have been part of UA for a long, long time. And they're kind of like a hybrid between staff and, and readers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They're volunteers. They're not paid. Um, at, they're also extremely close friends of both of ours. Yeah. And so, and they're, they're wheelers. They've been doing it for a long time. And that's the whole reason they get to go. Half of them run off road shop. Yeah. And the exactly. rest of okay. them build rad, and rad rigs all the time. Just well, and, and they seem and reliable because they seem to be every year there, no matter where it goes. Well, that's, right? that's oh, why. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why they're they versatile. come year after year is because we've got, you know, the, the big wild cards every year are actually the sponsors and the readers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, the readers, we always, you know, well, there's, there's a vetting process we can get, get into and all that stuff. But honestly, a lot of times the biggest wild cards are sponsors because, really? because I mean, there'll be sponsors year after year after year, 
Um, and those guys, we know what they're going to do or whatever. But then there's, you know, there, every year there's new guys that mm-hmm. come in and, and stuff like that. And you don't know what they're bringing. You don't wow. know what their skill so level they, is. And all you that guys stuff, don't so. check on them to, or you guys don't. Do you you send them the requirements, right? And that's it. Yeah, yeah. We do, but there's only so much vetting we can do. I mean, if they're if they're buying into the event, um, then they're coming on the trip. They're gonna, yeah. So and it could be literally the, the owner that doesn't know anything but wants to go on this adventure. It it, it, yeah. it was, it can, and, and has been. <laughs> wow, yeah. um, we've had people like that, that. that that never went four wheeling before, and yeah. here they are with like this. And a fairly hardcore yeah. trip. Yeah, and you guys don't deal. really play, right? I mean, you do really hard trails. So. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not. So that's the, that's the thing is like with Ultimate Adventure, it's 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 a week long deal, and yeah. so you know we don't generally go hit the biggest, hardest core spot. So if we're going, let's say to an off road park like in the southeast or mm-hmm. something like that, you know, we, you know the 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 default is, um, you know the. the the park owner or whatever, they'll, they'll immediately want us to go check out, you know, oh, look, like, check out uh, this double throwdown, yeah. you know, rawr, you know, yeah, that's that's super cool. We'll spend all day right here, yeah. and it'll make really crappy video, and we'll break a bunch of parts and stuff right. like that. Yeah. So generally what we try and do is uh, definitely hard, um, but, you know, let's let's cover some ground yeah. and stuff like that. So, so say, like, on a one to ten scale, you try to find seven? <laughs> Seven to eight, yeah, something yeah. like that. So we we ran. What did we run when we were out here? We ran. We lower ran Terminators. lower Terminator and Predator. Predator, that's it. Yeah. Predator so. first, and then lower Terminator. Yeah, but the I mean, challenge is that. Sorry to cut you off. The challenge in that was you did it in July, yeah. during the day. <laughs> There's yeah. that, and There's then that. the I secondary mean, part of it too is that it's it's a, a wide variety of cars. Yeah. yeah. So it's not. Yeah. If it was all Jeeps. No problem. You yes. know, it, we'll go do that or whatever. But but like Anaconda, I love Anaconda. Yeah. Anaconda's a rad trail. You are not going to stuff a full size <laughs> Dodge yeah. in Anaconda. You can it's shorten the bed or the cab in the bed on a three quarter ton Dodge, and it still won't fit. It just yeah. physically oh, won't you know. fit. He you tr- know, well, you the know fact this. that he tried to go up the last obstacle on Lower Terminator. You're talking about um, the big guy, right? Cooper. The Cooper. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We just kind of made the executive decision to not even try Anaconda. I mean, I've wedged yeah. Jeeps in there and pretty. Yeah. Pretty but that's that's the thing is like if they physically, there yeah. there are cars that physically will not fit in there, and yeah. so we we avoid that kind of stuff. So and you have to have you have to kind of tailor it to where it's good for a wide variety of cars. On that on that trip, right after that, did you guys head to Crown King after that, or was that the next morning? It was the next morning. Oh, okay. So you guys camped at table? Ma- no, no. You guys came back. No, into we town. came back. We hotel here. Okay. So oh, typically the way it works is like check-in day um, will be a hotel night, and then the first trail day is generally you know in that area. Okay. Excuse me. That'll be a hotel night, and then the rest of the week it's just it depends. Yeah. Sometimes it, it just goes somewhere. where it goes. Right. D- yeah. And availability. Every year's different. Wow. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. I, I'm definitely a huge fan of the UA. <laughs> wink, wink. Hint, hint, wink, <laughs> wink. Look, hint, hint. We, we, we love it too. And I mean, that's the reason why we give so much to it. I mean, it seems like it's a, and it is at the end of the day, it's a business proposition, but it yeah. is a labor of love. It sure really is. is. Like, it wouldn't have, we talked about it on the trip, but like this year would flat out not have happened if it weren't for mostly for Christian Hazel really fighting the, the battle. He's the editor of a, uh, uh, and Peterson's really the, on the ringleader of yeah, Ultimate he's, Adventure. He's the one he's that's ultimately in ch- responsible. He's in charge of the event. The yeah. final say if you yes. can get in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He's it, yeah. yeah. So, so he, he worked He worked incredibly hard behind the scenes dealing with getting everything ha- so that it could happen. And then Trent, both Trent and I, you know, like, I, I mean, I get a salary. Trent gets paid for his time, but it's still a lot. It's, of, it's a lot of work. Basically just but just the week <laughs> of, right? Just the trip. <laughs> no, right. Well, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's not really leading up to it. Like, leading up to it. I mean, there's there's two pre runs typically oh, okay. what I'll do. Wow. And everything. And by the time I mean, by the time it's all said and done, I'm not, I'm not making any money. No, like, he's, course, he gets course. paid back. But hopefully for his hotel rooms and yeah, yeah but, but and stuff like that. But, but it's, um, I mean, yeah. He's Woodward's away from said. here where he could be making money or yeah, away right. from doing something else yeah. when he could be making money. Right. And, and all the cronies, they're all volunteers, like you said. So, so all the cronies are volunteers. They're taking it out of their it's time. A, I think it's six or seven guys total. Yeah, but it's all volunteer. They're, they're not paid. Um, and they just do it because they love the yeah. event. I mean, this is, 
So this was the 20th Ultimate Adventure. It was wow. the 21st calendar year, yeah. but it was the actual 20th Ultimate Adventure. And most of those guys have been involved with the event anywhere from 8 to 15, sometimes yeah. 18 years. I've been on 10, 10 Ultimate Adventures, which is a fair amount. And I think all the cronies have been on all of the ones that I've been on. Yeah. So they were there before I got there. Ha- has anyone done every single Ultimate Adventure now that Rick Payway? He wasn't on this year's, was he? <laughs> Rick Payway wasn't on the first one either. Oh. Yeah, so Dirty Little Secret was <laughs> Rick Payway wasn't on the first one. <laughs> oh, we've you, done them all. We won't though. tell anyone. I, there's, there are two guys that uh, have done every single Ultimate Adventure. Um, I am one of them. Wow. Uh, the other one is Tom Boyd. Don't mind me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I, I'm, I, I consider myself extremely fortunate yeah. to have been involved with the event. I mean, and, and really, it, it, it was not by design by any means. I mean, I got invited to the first one pretty much just as a, a reader, essentially. Interesting. Um, and then just as the years progress, I mean, you just, you just try and make yourself useful and not be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. and you'd be I amazed at how much trouble people like to try and create. Yeah, and then and surprisingly, they don't get to come back. Yeah, yeah. I was w- I was wondering that if you if because you're not I mean again you're you're you don't know these people they're just checking in and you go hey that's a cool rig seems cool and his application is cool and you pick them but they could be total knuckleheads. So do you right? want to talk a little bit about the application process because I'm sure there's some guys that yeah. would like to know yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have to apply in order to go. That's the right. first step. You and have if you to apply, apply and you yeah. know them, you still might not go. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Mike Mike has applied several times and we have not invited him along now, for but, a number but do you of guys reasons. Get pe- <laughs> but do you guys get people who are just shocked they're not invited even though they didn't apply? Like do you get people no, who... No, but, oh, but okay. I, think, I think maybe what Vern was getting at is like a lot of times... I can't tell you how many times it happened to me and Vern or both of us or whatever. We're on a trail. They recognize us from UA or whatever. And they're like, oh, man, I'd love to go one day. Oh, OK. Like and, the, the and it's system. like, well, apply. Yeah. yeah. You Look, know, I mean, we want the, we want everybody to go. Like, for sure. honest to God. But sure. the, the the biggest hiccup is everybody wants to bring a JK or a Jeep that they mm-hmm. built. That's very much like somebody else. Sebastian Jeep. Varus's Jeep, which then, is very rad. And then the moron puts that in the application that he says he's copying that one. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I learned a few just, mistakes. It's just, it, it's <laughs> I'm so, gonna paint it pink. So, I mean, number one is to actually apply. And so yeah. like you, you pay attention to four wheeler.com, uh, pay attention to Instagram and Facebook. I mean, they, there's, you know, there is yeah. a, Typically, I'm going to say the invite or the applications open in February ish. The decisions get made in May ish. It okay. just depends. Um, but it's but even step one is to apply. Mix COVID in, but yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's a this whole year different story. Whole shit oh, shit. Plus, different with the whole thing. transition when Payway went away and started doing the Jeep and Drive and everything kind of fell behind a little bit. Well, and that then was it mostly just a staff change um, that happened where uh, Payway. Payway was the editor of Four Wheel and Off Road for a very, very long time, and right. therefore was in charge of Ultimate Adventure. But ultimately, uh, Ultimate Adventure itself is a Peterson's Four Wheel and Off Road event. Right. And so, when changes happened, very nice. Uh, when change, so there was some, there was some magazine changes that happened, and Rick went back to be the editor of JP Magazine, right. and Christian became the editor of Four Wheel and Off Road. Um, you know, because it's a Four Wheel and Off Road event. It was ultimately Christian's responsibility. That change happened at a very inconvenient time, timing wise, for uh, the 16 UA, which was yes. what that was. Yeah, that's, that was the. Um, and so that, you know, so yeah, that 16 was a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and kinda I, came think, I think Christian had like three weeks or something a month yeah, or like something that. like that's that. That's when the Basically. whole formula started to not be a formula, right? I mean, like you still have the formula, but it used to be like clockwork. You know, you'd have to have your application well, so by so March. And yeah. Everything yeah. just sort of been. So <laughs> before that, Rick was in charge of it, except yeah. for the first one. <laughs> and then, and I think he had a, he had a, a pretty rote system that he had right. worked out. And so, I mean, Christian's, just as capable as Rick uh, in terms of getting it done. I mean, he he usually leans on some uh, on help from other people to pre-run, which Rick pre-ran that's b- uh, his self. Yeah, and, and Rick did an incredible job. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, well, Rick yeah. Rick is, I think, in many ways responsible for ultimately like the the kind of legend, uh, yeah. for lack of a better term, of UA, and just kind of the the. I think he set the standard in many mm-hmm. ways for 
what UA is, what it's supposed to be, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah. I mean, he was yeah, he, he was let great it that. he let it when it was becoming a, a, a huge yeah world. You know, I mean, I don't want to get too over zealous here but a kind of world changing <laughs> off-road event i mean there's yeah. lots of events that copy the ultimate adventure <coughs> yeah ultimately yeah. ultimately the ultimate adventure was the first one you know what it is it's, it's so hard to get on it that people had to start making their own you know what I mean? well there's that <laughs> so. and, i mean honestly like it's 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 not the, yeah. it, it's it transcends people like it, it it's bigger than all of us so yeah, we like I said, we'd like everybody to be able to come on it. There's sure. a lot of people who have come on it in the past that we want to be able to bring back, yeah. and we can't do that. It just you can't like 20, 25 rigs is a huge, huge yes. trip. Is a that a, do you guys trip. have it capped at twenty five? It's I mean it, that we try and keep it at twenty five. I mean I think this year technically it was twenty six, which is the longest one that I've yeah. had I in a long time. I think we've we've had as few as nineteen or twenty. Do you already know the route you're going to go? Let's all yeah. Do you do you already know the route you're going to go before you decide to pick the readers? Because I noticed in this one you had a lot of full size rigs all over. Uh, that's you, an interesting question. No, oh, not not always. Um, and and really, what we do in terms of like planning the route, it that really has very little bearing, at least in my opinion, in terms of like who gets picked and, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think sometimes we we'll pick somebody that's kind of a local, but I don't know that that always happens. Not always. No. Yeah. And so, no, it's really more. So I guess back to the applicant process or whatever. So y you apply. And, and what I was getting at a, a minute ago is like, we, we run into guys, both of us on trails in Moab or TDS or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're all, you know, I want to go on you as well apply. And then, you know, six months goes by and then all the applications are there and, that guy didn't apply. Oh, okay. You know, so so that's there, step there one. There have been years <laughs> too when people did not reapply. When we were like, that guy's going next year, uh, and then they weren't there. Yeah. So, the, so some people are easily uh, demotivated, possibly by being and skipped I, or I life it. changes. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I t I totally get it. You know, you get. To, I mean, there are guys that have applied five and six times yeah. and just haven't just haven't made the cut and it's and it's and it's always for different reasons there's no each year is different in terms of like what we're looking for yeah. what yeah, there, they're looking there's for. there's no yeah, set of standards like i mean exactly. we, we, it's it, we choose uh the the cronies tr choose the returning reader uh but we as a group choose the invited readers and that's interesting that's uh well we kind of narrow it down to yeah. 12 well, yes. yeah, and then right. and then you ultimately guys do the dirty Christian. dozen and then yeah the final and then say. ultimately ultimately it's christian interesting and, uh, and I'm there's I'm also people like i've had people complain that they didn't get any feedback and stuff like that and it and like they're like oh yeah i applied this year and i'm like well i never saw your application mm. so i don't know whether it was on their end i don't think yeah. anybody's like so i'm sure well, and there's, we're talking about sometimes upwards of 130, yeah. 150 Yeah, I was wondering applicants. how many people do that. I mean, it's less than you'd think, but but right. still, I mean, I'm sorry, but we're not going to go back and tell the 140-something mm -hmm. guys, oh, if you just do this or eh, just right. do that. And if you, if, you have, so, if you have a JK with a bunch of bolt-on parts, yeah. we're not going to invite not you. Probably not going to do because you and, already and have. The, the reason is, and it's a good reason, is that – one of the sponsors or two of the sponsors are going to bring that vehicle. Mm -hmm. It may not be the exact same vehicle, but for all intents and purposes, it could also even be a vehicle. competitor of the sponsor you guys have. Could be right, could which be. could throw it that off. Doesn't well, I mean that doesn't play so much a part. Um, oh. But it's really more about so ultimately what what the staff are after is variety. Yep. Um, you don't want you don't want fifteen JKs in a line. Yeah. You Ooh. don't want. You know, you want as much variety as possible. Helps so with the everybody's got er, a lot of people have JKs. A lot of people have TJs. Um, a lot of people have Jeeps. Yeah. You know, Jeeps are gr I love Jeeps. I am a Jeep guy at heart. I mean, I, I love them to death. I think we all are. I mean, I think but anybody who's been around off roading. I mean, I like all kinds of vehicles. I've built all kinds of but vehicles, but I love Jeeps. I mean, Jeeps yeah. are. But ultimately, like if you're going to if you're going to watch the ultimate adventure coverage, 
or look at it in the magazine mm-hmm. or whatever, are you going to want to see 15 JKs mm-hmm. or are you going to see something, you want to see a bunch of weird cars? I love the Scouts, the yeah. big truck, the old uh, square bodies. You're right. It, All it the makes it. So, that's so, what yeah. makes it Anything cool. odd, automatically, pretty much to the front of the line. Yeah. Well, he built the Liberty off of the BDS Liberty. That was his yeah. inspiration. Sure. Right. When yeah. he saw and it on, and, the, on the And UA. the Liberty's a rad car. Don't yeah. get me wrong. And that's, I mean, that would, I would say... <laughs> I would say you're a dick, Mike. I would say like if you applied, you would have a way better chance than me. Than a standard. Yeah, no, no the Ken flies there. The okay, if the you're if you're gonna apply with a Jeep, you better have a flat fender <laughs> or something. Well, awful, it was like built a for a bonus. It definitely was supposed to be that little extra leg because when Payway had it, it seemed like he always made sure a flat flatty was in there at least once. But I just saw Ken. Is it Ken flies now, a crony? Yeah, Ken he's, he's yeah. Ken Smith. Yeah, he's so a flatty. He's Ken Fly something or other something on, on uh, Instagram. On Instagram, oh, okay. but yes, he's he's the newest crony, and he's he came on the first time with his flatty. Yeah, so but he's got a '72 Blazer, which oh. is pretty rad. Oh, nice. oh is yeah. that the blue one? That's that baby blue one. Yeah, nice. oh, last yeah. the year before he brought or what? What did he CJ10? Oh no, he drove uh, he drove a uh, Harry's truck last year, but the year before that he had a a CJ10 on a Dodge. Uh, chassis with a 24 valve. Oh no no, that's the that was the 72 truck. I was talking about oh, his, 72. The um Mustard the CJ10. Oh the CJ10. Yeah, yeah. his his orange one. Oh. Hmm. That was on Jeez. Payway. Rick commandeered yeah. that one year when there was something, but it's on a TJ. Oh, was that a truck? Does it look like a TJ yeah. truck? Yeah. That yeah. thing's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool actually. Yeah, it's sort of it a It stands out. A metallic orange. Yeah. 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 So hmm. basically, if people want to go, you got to apply. That's and you got to have something cool. And you got to have something weird. Yeah, and you got to have mean, weird is good. Weird is good. Okay. And, and it really doesn't have to be built crazy. You're on Leaf Springs no. on the Mm-mm. Scout. You just need your no. basic stuff. Well, yeah. and there is Lots a list of, of requirements, which I've read on your guys' website. Yeah, so yes. So follow those requirements or add in what you need. And yeah, so it's basically, pass. I mean, it's nothing super hard. It's, it's 35s, lock front and rear. Uh, roll cage, uh, tow hooks front and back, a winch. Um, there's, a, I mean, the, all that stuff's published. Yeah. You can look at it online, but it's not, it's not earth shattering. You know, yeah. you don't have, yeah. you know, to you have don't the, have to have an LS. One the, thing the, though, you don't have to have no. a. Uh, One thing I did see that isn't anywhere, and I just heard it through you guys was, you have to, you can't really run CO2 to air up because you have to air up oh, so yeah. many times, right? You need a type of air compressor. Good, but you better have <laughs> a yeah. lot of CO2. <laughs> so yeah. that's nowhere, that's kind of like one of those surprise ones, you know. Yeah, like, I guess, oh, damn, I I guess they're, an AC yeah, I never really thought about that. But yeah, most uh, most of the time during air up, if you, I mean, not everybody has onboard air, so. That's yeah. true. I, I mean, I run CO2. It's not a requirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Sometimes so we around. double up, you know, I mean, usually there's somebody with like a, a mad, old york air, air ac compressor mm-hmm. that'll yeah. uh, inflate everything yeah, my within buddy's a got a sandin on it so which <laughs> pretty good. So that's nice. what i did for the longest time and then it finally froze whoosh, it seized mm-hmm. up and yep. i couldn't do anything with it trying to help that guy when you're using the the air tools on it huh yeah we had yeah. another turbo repair and another somebody yeah. else the guy's like something's wrong with your air compressor man i look over my jeep's on fire yeah you know? <laughs> i was like yeah. that's awesome yeah. yes <laughs> right. two there. hours non-stop grinding out to far get. on a trail too yeah, right? that, that, that'll springs. do it yeah oh okay very Coming. cool so uh, you need to apply yeah. you, you need to apply. apply step one <laughs> but um so and then and then don't be a douchebag <laughs> oh, no, you're that's out, Max. I'm out. I'm so, out. Sorry, buddy. So there, there. <laughs> that was Ma- was Max, uh, Max a douchebag? No. No, no, no. He seems like a really mind. nice guy. He's, yeah, he's a when douchebag you, to me all the time. Yeah. But but what's interesting, so, so it, like I said, it's not a, this isn't a democratic process or yeah. anything like that. I mean, it's it's a, there's a, there's a selection committee, which shall remain nameless, that he and I may or may not be on. Um, ultimately, the decision is Christians or whatever. But anyway, the Dirty Dozen... Once, once you make the dirty dozen, all twelve of those guys get phone calls. Oh, nice! Mm. From, uh, from Christian. So and you don't just see yourself in the magazine one day and you're like, "Whoa!" I no. <laughs> uh, I think you I mean, might some, not necessarily be. Uh, they might not. He might not tell that you that, that you're yeah. in the dirty dozen, but he oh. talks to everybody in the dirty dozen. So, oh, okay. and so yeah. it's a it's a phone interview essentially. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're you know he he. He asks all kinds of questions or whatever. I mean, basically, what what he's trying to figure out is, um, you know, do you know your car? Do you know how to fix it if it breaks? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, and can we stand you for a week, yeah. essentially? And there have been more than one occasion, Christian has told me this, where the guy was in. 
until he talked to her. Oh. Really? Yeah. I never that's even thought of that aspect. Yeah. I mean, that's so the that part. that's the other key element is you got to be, you, you got to be chill. You got to be laid back. You got to be personable. Yeah. Um, you got to be, you know, talkative and, mm-hmm. and or you know at least responsive and, yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That makes sense. And and you know, I like mean, I said, you, ultimately you, you can be a quiet person for sure. But but uh, you know, like if you start talking about your sniffing farts collection or like <laughs> how many oh, aliens you've seen this or year how or badass something. you are generally and everything yeah. you if you're, do if you're way better and <laughs> no, and we've had people on the yeah. trip even made it on the trip that know everything yeah yeah i mean you know well, we, i don't we, i don't claim to know everything so but I'm we run into that in real life when you roll up on a guy that just broke down and you want to offer a hand or you know mike and i have learned our lesson a few times to maybe not offer everything in the first 10 yes. seconds you know, maybe it's fully under control and they don't need anyone to intervene because it's already possibly a stressful breakdown or a situation. Sure, sure. Yeah. So not you don't need 10 people jumping in every single time. And it, it does escalate. A yeah. When, when you bro- he broke down on the filter when he first built the Jeep, mm-hmm. you know, and pie it draw. Yeah. And had a link come off. And the uh, and we've been working on it for like, what, two and a half hours, yeah. almost have it back together. Yeah. And this group comes oh, the, up, the, the dude Bronco rolls in or all. whatever. Look, what the fuck? Get out of the way. Let me show yeah. you how to do all this stuff. We're yeah. like, bro, you just got to stand back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got this totally under control. Yeah. So, but um, I think we've all been there and yeah. we've probably been that guy too. Of course. I mean, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, and with the amount you, of it, miles a week long of wheeling does, and, and that's very hard on a vehicle. I mean, it's way crazier yeah, you than know your rig. It's yeah. way crazier than a weekend out having fun that's, that's at your the local thing spot. That, that I think that, we probably have made it pretty clear in the magazine articles, but like the road days are or often the hardest. Mm-hmm. are often the hardest. Yeah, because if you have a crazy vibration that could ruin something in your drivetrain, I mean that's that's well, a problem. And a lot of guys, I mean, a lot of guys, unfortunately, you know, they're they're not they're it's their trail rig, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they so they don't spend it, a lot so. of time on the on the street in it or whatever. Right. And so that's when a lot of that ugliness comes to a head. Is it you know interesting? Because we drive on day. the road a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you guys do. And that's, my, yeah. I had a shirt made that said trailers are for boats. And then when I went to Moab last with all these guys in their trailers, I wore it, you know, with pride. But what, what did Daryl tell you? <laughs> he you, said, you better that? not need a trailer on the <laughs> way back, <laughs> buddy. Point. So I've, I've done that. I, I drove out to, I drove my flat fender a, lo- a few years, well, it was 10 years ago now. I drove it out to San Diego. Dave Chappelle put an exhaust on it. I drove it out to TDS <laughs> from San Diego. I then proceeded to break the rear axle housing. <laughs> oh, that's when you drove off into the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you and drove that, off and, that cliff. And it right. went home on a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah. fixing that. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I remember seeing that in the magazine. You guys had it all chained up trying to square it, it down. Physically you're in trying two to, pieces. It was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was bent, 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 <laughs> bent. Yeah. That's great. So um, keep it on. So the, be careful is what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So on the note of rushing all these things and not really knowing your rigs, for the last couple of times, I don't know about this one. Um, if you were way behind on that one, I don't think you were too bad. It wasn't. It awful. was. It was. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't terrible. But the but the the lead up was pretty bad. Because honestly, it was like, okay, we're doing it. Let's start this build. And then it was like, nope, it's not happening. Okay, we're doing Meaning it. The event was uh, not happening. Yeah, like yeah. the whole shooting match. Yeah. There was a lot of back and forth, and a lot of people were. Nobody, you know, legally unsure whether we yeah. could pull it off and physically. Uh, I mean, it w- there were so many, so many unknowns. So you weren't building it nonstop, not knowing if the trip was going to happen or not. You're exactly. on and off on the build exactly. alone. And I was we kind of we're in a new sort of uh, paradigm where I'm I'm writing, you know, two, three, four stories a week. Yeah. And so I didn't want to start writing stories on this thing and then not publish them because that then I wouldn't have anything to turn in yeah, for my right. job. So uh, <clears throat> it was, yeah, there was a lot of Interesting. touch and go. It was, a, it was a weird, crazy, crazy year, just like 2020 has been all. Yeah, every time you turn around, it's punching you again, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. Yeah, but, I mean, we <laughs> – so the morning we were supposed to leave, uh, we pulled the transmission, had to pull the transmission out of it. Oh, stuff out like of that. out of yours or no, no, the, no, new, the new the yeah, new uh yeah so we got everything done like what the day before day done? or two yeah i mean drivable so Jeez. a lot of it was uh not done but drivable and we drove it over to uh uh buddy's uh shop over there where there's sort of a dirt hill where you can kind of flex things out and something was not right like it would hardly go into gear 
and uh, it would shift between gears, but when you got it into like the taller gears, third and fourth, it acted like it, it was slipping, like it acted like the clutch was no good. Hmm. Brand new clutch, you know, everything's new. There's nothing wrong with any of that. And uh, we uh, we started calling around and trying to figure things out with uh, Quick Draw Brands Adapters, who's the guy that supplied the bell housing and the flywheel, and then uh, Center Force Clutches, which is a, a company up here in uh, Prescott okay. Valley. Mm-hmm. Prescott. Oh, nice! I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. They're uh, they're really good, and uh, uh, we we're just trying to figure out what it could possibly be before we tore the transmission out because we were pretty sure i think we both kind of knew it needed to come out but uh um what, um, what, what transmission are you running it's yeah. a ax15 oh okay, okay. so yeah. it's a 2000 or i'm sorry a 1998 ish mm-hmm. tj transmission yep. and uh so we talked to will Beatty over at uh center force thanks again will yeah will, s- will saved our, our bacon he was like what you're describing sounds an awful lot like when the uh, shouldered bolts that hold the the pressure, pressure plate. plate to the flywheel are not Counterboard. counterboard. Oh, and so um, we oh. called the we called the, the the adapter guy back and said, "Hey, did you counterbore the the holes for the flex plate?" And he said, "No, we don't do that because Cummins doesn't do it." Jeep does on the four liter flywheels. So and we were using a, a Jeep clutch and pressure yeah, plate. Yeah. So the the, the 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 clutch and pressure plate that kind of came from center force had shouldered bolts and what we needed were were unshouldered bolts really? or or the flywheel needed to be mm-hmm. counterboard interesting so we called up uh i can't believe he knew that <laughs> yeah over uh, the this phone. is this is will baby that's like, what i mean is, when you live awesome. and breathe clutches for yeah. 25 years like he has i mean yeah. that's this is like without him we could have we could have been searching trying to figure out what was going on for two days well you could have looked directly at it and oh. not recognize we could have taken issue. it apart and put it back yeah. together four times without sure. knowing what yeah. was going on. i mean and it looked good i mean we yeah he has a boroscope and we actually put a boroscope in there and we're wow. looking at and i think ultimately what it was is that a couple of the uh pressure plate bolts had uh paint missing off of them like like oh. a, like like the like the pressure plate had been walking a little yeah. bit, wow. but you could look at the pressure plate and the the flywheel, and they I mean, you couldn't yeah. see a gap, right? But it was there. But he was like, "This is what it sounds like." So it just wouldn't compress all the way and hold the clutch. Yeah, and, right. to slip. and it was, uh, <laughs> and it was crazy. difficult to engage because it was somehow backed up against the. It was going, board. I think, too far, or I don't remember I don't exactly remember what why. all that part. It's was. probably not squeezing it enough to fully disengage it. I think no, it was um, it was going too far, so it was like. Because it's a oh. it's a diaphragm, you know. There's there's the point where it releases, and when you go past it, it actually goes starts or grabbing like again. The grab. fork was hitting the 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 flex plate or yeah. something. Something. It was something. Yeah. But he was he was like that sounds like this, and like <laughs> we pulled it apart, and sure enough, or well, I guess we called the 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 guy at Quick Draw, who was very you know I mean Chad at Quick Draw knows his stuff too, and he yeah. was like, oh yeah, well. We don't counterboard on a on the Cummins because Cummins doesn't Cummins because doesn't the do. engine doesn't spin. It spins four thousand RPM. Yeah. Or right. whatever. And the whole counterbore thing, I guess, is more for high RPM and balance issues or hmm. whatever. So, you know, if you're spinning something three grand, bleh. but huh. if you're spinning something seven grand, it's different. Yeah. Right. So it's just uh, it's not something like. So what we ended up doing was pulling the tranny and I counterboard on a drill press the <laughs> the the flywheel and it works on the good. day and you're it leaving. was flawless yeah. after that. And wow. it was fine. Like yeah, we, we put it back together and it was like a brand new car. It was like nothing wow. wrong with it. And it was that. That's all. It, I mean, we're talking like about said, twenty thousands. You couldn't, you couldn't see like a space between yeah. the flex Jeez. plate and the flywheel. That's so crazy. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this, but you know, I did. I had when you first walked in, um, I told you like I have seen almost no content on the build. To which you informed me, there's yeah, like so twenty <laughs> or more. There's build twenty six or twenty seven build updates, and then I'm doing like a. Uh, high detail version for the print magazine that's also got on the internet. What you need to do is go to fourwheeler.com. There's a little drop down bar that says events, and then in there it says ultimate adventure. And if you go to that and scroll down, you'll mm-hmm. see the you'll see the build up on the the ultimate adventure long range. Also Jeep. a hashtag, right? L- yeah, long range UA Jeep or what do you? What's your call, hashtag? It's the 2020 Ultimate Adventure Long Range Jeep. Yeah. So UA LRJ. Yeah. 2020 UA LRJ. Yep. Yeah. 
Is that and that's I did search that, and after the UA, there was quite a bit of uh, stuff to see on yeah, Instagram. So if you're on least. Instagram, then yeah, that's 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 uh should be tagged and everything yeah. that we posted that everybody posted from the yeah. event. Yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is like a modern version of your Willys. That's yeah. what I was picturing. Well, it like. At the end of the day, the apple doesn't far too fa- fall too far <laughs> from the tree, but uh, it's sort of a homage to World War II North African. Uh, Jeep. It's awesome. Now is that why the grills cut out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the 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 Rat Patrol TV show is based on the British SAS who used uh, MBs in World War II. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they cut all the slats out except for the center two. Yeah, I've seen pictures huh. of older Jeeps like that. Yeah. yeah. And they were uh, they terror. I mean, like they destroyed uh, Rommel and the the Italians in North Africa. <laughs> they 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 ripped them up like they kicked butt. Oh. Are you a historian, or you just love all I that just, stuff? Yeah, yep. anything. I'm I'm a nerd. I don't know. At the end of the day, yeah. Because your 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 dad was a paleontologist. Yeah. So my dad was a paleontologist, and he spent a lot of like one of his uh, field sites was in north north uh, northern Egypt. Uh, wow. So I spent a lot of time out there with him as a kid, driving around, and this is the area where where. The, there, we drove in World War II battlefields where there were still active landmines because Jeez. they didn't know Whoa. where they all were. And you, you got sent out as a child to find them and play in it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, we go, were go a little left, Vernie. <laughs> we, we, weren't, we weren't looking for mines, but we were looking oh, okay. for fossils. And uh, my dad didn't really have any concept of like going on vacation, so we went and looked work. for fossils. Yeah. Well, but, it was work, but, but that's it was a cool fun. Experience. Dude, I got two grandkids, and all I do is play in dirt anyway. Oh, I know. Yeah. So it's, it's the same yeah, thing, right? It was it was great, but Dig it's it. also his fault, that, directly his fault, that I like to go four-wheeling. Yeah. But it's cool because the reason I brought that up is, you, you like, every time we stop somewhere, you go, hey, you know, right over there is this and this and this and this. And right over, like, we're at Crown King. I've been on that trail a billion times. And we stop, sure. and you go... Hey, do you know right here, this house, this house, that little structure or whatever. Sure, sure. So you know all this vast information. I'm going to Cody, and you're like, hey, when you pass this town and you go through this bridge or this thing, you'll see this rock. And this is this layer of rock, this layer yeah. of rock. This. Is it, so you just – did I you just – I don't – I, look, I, my, my life and goal – or my goal in life is to have fun, and part of that for me is learning. And I feel like if we can – I think that that's what everybody enjoys. I mean, yeah. that's what – that's what – everybody kind of looks forward to it at the end of the day you might not realize it but you're learning about something new yeah that's the best and thing about the adventures I, I think that educating each other mm-hmm. is part of that like if you know something and you can share it then by god do it it's actually a lot of fun going four-wheeling with Vern because like you can I appreciate pull over that. at some random spot yeah. and be like um why are those rocks weird looking <laughs> and he'll explain it and do, that, and that do your kids cool. now enjoy it as much as you might have? Or Well, so they're five. I mean, they enjoy all kinds of things. They mostly yeah. like running around in their underwear and okay. watching <laughs> TV at this point. But, yes, they uh, – Maybe a little young still. Yeah, I've definitely tried to give them the sort of wanderlust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so I'll bring it back to where I, I just thought of another question I wanted to ask. The, re- the rushing at the very end. So we all, you know, like every time you go out, usually there's a shakedown. But your guys' shakedowns for a couple of seasons have just been straight out onto the UA. Have you had any major issues? Or, or you just been super lucky and you've built enough that you kind of know the – do you start with the – do you, wait a minute, hold on. Do you have like a recipe that you try to do with everyone? No, no. Well, uh, no, but we're kind of shoehorned into building something that fits with our advertisers. So. Okay. Mm. Like we were saying, the the Falcons, uh, Falcons been the tire sponsor for the past five year, four or five years. Skyjacker and Skyjacker, and we, I mean, they're 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 all great companies. Yeah, like, they're great partners um, for sure. Cummins, uh, Cummins, but oh, yeah. but but so the last four vehicles have had the same engine in it. Yeah, um, we've been running the thirty eight inch Falcons because that's the biggest tire they've got, and you know. We want to build something mm-hmm. big. They look great, not? though. Yeah. I mean, oh, they, they're, and they, they they're a great tire for Ultimate Adventure. Like they do everything yeah. we need them to do. Good they road go down, manners. They go down the road. They go down the trail. Yeah. And like, I was gonna tell a story on him from this year. Like we got going one morning, 
and Trent's leading the group and Christian's riding with me and we jumped out on the freeway and all of a sudden like I look down and we're doing 75 80 miles an hour <laughs> and I'm okay with that but I'm the second car in this line of 27 six, oh so you start to get cars. some distance huh and I and like one of the standards is 65 right and so I was ah. like so I call forward to Trent and Trent's my best buddy like we give each other our time all the time and I'm like do you want to you know back it off a touch there <laughs> and I didn't, there, say, I didn't say anything like yeah. you want to back it off a little bit there dickhead or anything like and, that and, and, you, Gordon and you were in the one. scout this year yes yeah. so the scout does 70 80 miles an hour so, all day long. so so Trent's retort was well I'm doing the speed limit <laughs> 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 and I was like I know that's and the thing. speed limit was, in my defense, 80 miles an hour. Was really? Wyoming? Oh, yeah, in Wyoming. And I wasn't yeah. having a problem keeping up with you, but I was kind of worried about some of the other <laughs> cars that <laughs> have to go where we're going. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But, uh, no, so I, so back to your point. Um, I think I, I think that, you know, him doing four cars, I've, I've assisted, you know. Yeah, with Trent's it. wired um, all of them. Um, but, I mean, I think you get to a point where you know what the gotchas are going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know to, you know, pay extra attention to the plumbing and make sure that it's not going to rub against X and Y and, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. And you just you just get better at it. Yeah, but the, yeah. these little Cumminses are pretty rad. And, I mean, they will run in a crate. They'll run in the crate. You yeah. hook up a couple of wires and give it Jeez. fuel, and it will run. And it will run. Is that the infamous three-wire uh, diesel mm. engine that I don't even know if it's three. It might I, be three. It could be I, two. It's, uh, <laughs> and you got con- them dialed in. It needs by constant now. and switch. Just, power. just hang a shoelace so over it, and so maybe something yeah. will happen. So part of it, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of cheating because the engine package is so solid that we know it's going to run. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's right. just like well, and it, it's brand new, right? And it's brand that's, new. That's the other yeah, but you had problems in the Durango, didn't you? Have a tuning problem with it or something? In the Durange Rover? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I but had power steering problems, but I don't. I'm still not hmm. exactly sure what that was yeah. about. Oh, no, I thought you were. Um, I would have swore you were. You had something when you first took off. Oh, so they put a fresh tune on it. They had done like a like the 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 people from Cummins sent out a new tune that was a higher torque. Oh. It was the so now now they're advertising three ten. 310 foot pounds of torque and uh, 161 horsepower, yeah. and I think both these cars have that tune. But back then, that would have been three years ago. That tune was something they had just released. Gotcha. And so they, when I, when I started the event, like we drove out and parked the trailer at Fred Williams' parents' house in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and we jumped in the cars and drove to Maine. And uh, so on the trip to Maine, that car had the factory tune whatever was came mm. with and then when i got there the cummins guy f- reflashed the computer with the new tune gotcha. and it was like a noticeable different i mean oh, it was like that's adding what it, was. A, it was like adding a yeah. chip I yeah mean, it, you, geez. it was like it wouldn't it wouldn't quite pull hills in on the highway at highway speeds until they reflashed it and gotcha. then it was just didn't care. You know, I'm yeah. curious if they make that for the Liberty 3.7 engine, that same <laughs> tune. Because I'm. I, <laughs> Give him a call. I'll, I'll talk to a guy, but <laughs> I, oh, I doubt thank it. You. Thank you. <laughs> There's a little bitty tiny crate right up there with a little teeny tiny oh. for 2.8. I saw another one over there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right there. <laughs> so, um, so out of all the all the the UA or out of all your vehicles that you've built, you've built tons like the Shrink Ray, um, the Corsa Willys. I love the Willys. The uh, you still, yeah, you still have it. What am I doing? The my my forty nine, yeah, three A, yeah. That one you was that your first one or? So that's the car that I've owned the longest. I bought it in nineteen ninety nine and like back in nineteen. <laughs> yeah, that's old, bro. <laughs> right, and uh, uh, so that's kind of just part of me, <laughs> but it, it kind of shows like an evolution of my learning how to build cars. There's some pretty nasty booger welds and some pretty dumb. Yeah badly placed parts on it but like but like most people's first big build you know like my liberty it it had to go two times it needed some pretty serious um like parts replaced welds dug out and redone the right way i mean but you know i also built it in about four months but i don't have the experience you did yeah you do so, well but um, i didn't i had no experience when i i, I, I yeah. guess i i had some but i didn't really i certainly didn't have what i i think i built basically the iteration that it's in i started building it in 2003 hmm. see i follow like i love my willies there's so many different things that it doesn't do and that i would love to change it yeah but it's like 
I love it. I can't ever get rid of it. You know what I mean? I mean, so I think the idea of like a do it all car is a really sexy, attractive thing, but I really don't think that there is such a thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. There, there, there's some things to be said for a brand new JL Wrangler that the amenities, the comfort that's quiet inside. But if you gouge it on a rock on Anaconda and, and you try to do an insurance claim, you know, like it's it, everything's a little different. The mindset is just different on um, wheeling like, you know, Mike and I have older vehicles. You guys have older vehicles. You don't really mind a scratch or a, like a brush scraping down it. You yeah, know, I mean, JLs are amazing. And yeah. a JL, JL Rubicon is pretty rad. Um, and basically at this point, you could probably step into one of those. And take it on Ultimate Adventure, and it probably would do the yeah. trip, but you would also probably devalue it. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing that frightens me about all these new cars, and it is what it is. I mean, uh, and I think they're getting better with it, but just all the computers and yeah. and and like, if you submerge that, which we've done on Ultimate Adventure, I mean, yeah. uh, both hoods and well, I, yep. I guess we didn't really have any water this year, but last year we sure put. Oh, a bow wave over the top yeah, of that. I mean, hill. it was over the the nose of the. Hood. Jeez. Yeah, Brendan Metcalf's so. flatty was underwater, right? right, like right all right. the way to yeah, the you guys window. Towed it. You guys towed it right <laughs> through yeah. one of the river yeah. crossings. Right. So yeah, that was so uh, I just I get a little bit worried when there's like yes, I, how many computers? Well, are and on we've that had. Car? I mean, especially it's been mostly not necessarily stock cars, but like uh, some of the Hemi swaps or LS swaps mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, we've had, you know. Uh, uh, fan relays go bad mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that, which are, and that's a factory Mopar part. Um, you know, I've, I've had to turn people around on dirt and drive and stuff like that because there something failed or, oh, wow. or it went into limp mode or, or right. whatever. Um, so, I mean, it definitely happens. Mm-hmm. Even right. In, so even not to cars. pick on him, he, he actually beats himself way uh, up way more than he should. But in Alaska, Stephen Messer in, uh, the, uh, the blue. blue Cherokee, yep. He did a really good job, but he he was fighting some sort of a computer problem where it would go, into, go into limp, limp mode, mode. Mm-hmm. and there was nothing anybody could do because it was a computer problem. Mm-hmm. And there's no one around, right? Well, it's and it's yeah. you're like you can't the grizzly up the road doesn't know how to <laughs> reflash his computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's definitely exactly. something to all the older cars for sure. For sure. Well, even even going to a manual transmission like the Liberty is now to my old JK was automatic. I mean, the wheel speed sensors, the limp mode issues, I don't have any of that. Yeah. Sure, you know, I've got a traction control so light kinda, on. So we kind of cheat in that way, too, because we yes. get to build these cars. Like, that is a an LJ, but it doesn't have any of the LJ wiring or computers yeah. in it. Right. Which I, I like that part. I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the beauty of a manual transmission, too, is that you can always move. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, m- short of the clutch exploding... You can always move. That Mike really <laughs> pitched it well to me, too. You know, he said in his willies, he could knock a huge hole or, or have no oil left in, an, in a manual transmission. Yep. He might only be going two miles an hour, but he could probably get out of what yeah. he is to somewhere Absolutely. where he can get recovered. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I honestly feel like you should drive whatever you're most comfortable with. Yeah. Sure. And that's that's well, sure. like at the end of the day, you can get into pissing matches about what's better. Both automatics and manuals work. Yes, yeah. both yeah, of them absolutely. can be built to work. Um, but yes, I agree with Mike. Like you knock a hole in the side of the tranny, and if it's an automatic, it's not going to work. It's not mm-hmm. going to work anymore. Yeah. You could just up stand an automatic upright long enough, and it stops yeah. working. Yeah, yeah, if you quit picking <laughs> so, up oil. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, and, and and really, like the the manual versus automatic. I mean, it's you know Ford versus Chevy or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. I think I mean each one has their advantages. I honestly, I'm okay with either one. I mean, I I, th- I think they each have their advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. I think the one, the only thing an automatic to me clearly has over a manual is if you're on kind of like a, a super steep, loose hill climby sort of a thing, um, you know, just the ability to shift yes. yeah. and shift right then. Yeah, I'm not is, shifting. Is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're There's not. I mean, it doesn't that. matter. You could be the best yeah. manual shifter Mm-mm. guy in the world. You're still going to lose a bunch of momentum yep. and stuff like yeah. that. That specific circumstance, which yes. comes up quite a bit depending on what part of the country you wheel in, yep. um, I think is a clear advantage. Any other time? Uh, I've, I've done it here locally. Much, I was yeah. in four high on a local trail and it had all these big rolling hills. And I know you guys are going to be shocked by this, but the 3.7 makes very low power, especially <laughs> at like 200,000 miles. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But in four high, I was running Strange. out of power. To where I literally had to stop, and I stalled while stopping, of course. And um, I had to, 
hit the brake, you know, and then now the Jeep is off. So quickly restarted. So at least my, my brakes are working good. And I now I'm, I feel like I was a little bound and I had to get it in low range to even possibly continue. Mm -hmm. And the guy behind me in a newer vehicle is probably like, what the hell is this guy? Like this guy's rolling up and down the hill. He can't even make like, you know, huge axles, big tires. This guy can't even make it up a, a slight gray, a slight steady grade, you know, not an obstacle like loose yeah. dirt road, but I mean, th I you I can know, compensate I, that with the right motor, though. You know, yeah, like, yeah. If I if I had a powerful motor, yeah, with low, low end torque. But yeah, I mean, I like mean, like what you were saying. So so, um, being with a manual, like one of the hardest things is picking the right gear. Yeah, yeah. You got to find, and that just takes yeah, ass in the seat. Yeah. Or, or if you're, it's if you're definitely talking. more of a learning curve. With, yeah, an auto, yeah. with a manual, I mean, for sure, it's more definitely more of a learning curve. Well, I I never been I never been in the sand dunes till this last trip to Moab, and I I thought this is gonna suck in the sand dunes because of the big giant from going from second to third is that huge giant gap, mm -hmm. but if you start in third with the Magnum box only, that thing rips, dude. Yeah, it's like the perfect gear. And I mean, for honestly, them. yeah, like, well. It just took forever to find that. Yeah, once you figure out that that combination, you don't yeah. really need to shift yeah. most of the time. Well, yeah. and uh, like years ago, I got a I got a smoking deal on an AX15. Um, he he and I went and got it at way oh, out yeah. in Queen yeah. Creek, way out in the middle of nowhere. And this dude, you know, I was like, ah, you know, looks good or whatever. And we were incognito. The guy had no didn't he know didn't know who, didn't we, know who were we were. And he was like, he's fine. like, yep. And he puts the button on his garage and he garage openings is this tj on like 37s or 38s or right. whatever and he's like might have been on 39s it was just fine when <laughs> you when you when you uh when you go to them big rocks you got to have an automatic I was yeah. like, okay, okay. <laughs> this is going in my buggy. thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks didn't, for the didn't information you, didn't you stumble across an ax-15 because the guy didn't know what it was and mm. and you ended up like selling it or something and didn't you get it almost for free or, or like it was part of like a bigger Package deal? <laughs> oh, are you not allowed to say? Uh, we probably, dealer. probably cut all that. <laughs> 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 edit, edit that out, Mike. Yeah, yeah it was 100 percent free, and then I ended up trading it. I traded it and sold my old welder to upgrade to that oh. automatic. I didn't, I didn't know. I don't know who it was from. Nice. So yeah, but it was okay. an. A, he th he he's like, this is the shitty junk one, AX5 or whatever. And I was over, and I'm like, no, that's a 15. He's like, no, man, it's a five. I've had it checked. I was like, okay. all right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. All right. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> Thanks, with you. dude. I'll take it. You know what I mean. So I have beat yeah. the dog shit out of an. And AX5. I have beat the dog shit out of an AX15. Yes. Just fine. I had only kept it for. I was gonna build an ice cream truck. Yeah. You know that was my goal. Yeah. And I was collecting all these. I was trying to get free parts everywhere. You know, like Dana 30s and stuff like that. But anyway. Nice. Hey, when I, you ever weld with an automatic welder, you got to go get one because they're awesome. <laughs> so, Did I do that to you? Yeah. You oh, said. Yeah, sorry. You, no, no. Um, well, you said here, weld this, and then you watch me because um, you said it's kind of weird. You just have to wait that second. You know? Yeah, I mean, it takes. Yeah, like it's it's weird when you're used to a manual welder. Yeah, but then it's not weird. You, you, you got? Do you have the Miller two eleven also? I have a Millermatic. I don't know. Oh, just something, but Millermatic. But, it's, yeah. but it's, a, it's got the auto set, and like when I first got one of those Millers with an auto set, I was like, I don't trust this thing. It's and then I started yeah. using it, and I I, I, am, yeah. I have converted. I yeah. love it. I it's feel like great. I need one. It was for, for my. It will make <laughs> you a better welder. Yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah. And I was sitting there saying, like, literally, I've never enjoyed welding. I've always been. I mean, I enjoy it, but you're always kind of nervous. Is that going to work? Is that like yeah. shit? Right. And it's sort of stressful. And that was actually enjoyable to weld with it. You were just like, what else can I do, dude? Like, <laughs> yep. everywhere yeah. you yeah. go, it does. So. It does it. Yeah, it's Mike amazing. ended up getting the Millermatic, and our buddy Chris. Yeah. And yeah. I'm I'm stuck over here, you know, just, uh, a little faster, a little slower, a little hotter. Mm, okay, well that broke. I just take Vern's hand me downs. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice, <laughs> nice. Hey. Trent, well, Trent ended mine. up with a. It's I, I don't even know where it is. I think it's, it's probably there. a two oh, eleven. I think that one's a two eleven. Was that yeah. the Vulcan one I saw over there? Uh, it's over there. <laughs> no, it's it. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Everlast. Was that the Harbor Freight one? Right Century. No. <laughs> no, I should I should know what I use. It's a Millermatic. I want to say it's like it's a, a two, big one. two fifteen. Oh, I don't know. Good. But it, it's a rad. It also is rad. It's everything that that machine does in mil, uh, in a and MIG tick. welding. Yeah. And yeah. then you then you you literally pick up the TIG torch and put the TIG pedal down, and it will switch over to TIG. Jeez. That's awesome. Like you don't you don't have to like if you have the settings already mm -hmm. in it, yeah. you don't have to do anything. You nice. have to turn the gas on and off. Wow, that's and cool. it just switches over to TIG. So does, I don't, your, does yours do that? 
No, no. I have a TIG machine for that. Yeah. I just go to the TIG machine. It does the same thing. I just pick up the torch and the pedal, and that one does it too. <laughs> but it's that, that's nice. Yeah. So I don't use it much. I have a tucked separate in a separate TIG welders are for poor people. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just being a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Shop space is crucial, man. Wow. Pay per square foot. Wow, it's getting thick. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's getting thick. <laughs> Put your boots on. Right. There was another good deal. A guy told me, he said, that won't weld aluminum. So I got online. I was like, it says it'll weld aluminum. <laughs> you know what Oh, I mean? your TIG welder when you yeah. bought it? Yeah. So he let it go. Brand spanking new. Let it go at half, half the price, literally. Wow. And it was... Uh, I would took it right home and welded it. So one thing I know it. about Mike, he's a wheeler dealer mm-hmm. for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's oh, pretty yeah. good. But uh, yeah. but you bought a flat fender right out from underneath him. Do you realize? Oh, oh that's right. See, I'm also a big dirty, mouth. dirty, that's dirty right. bag. Big mouth. About that. <laughs> but you didn't post that. I, d- posted I did it. do Mike a dirty. <laughs> yeah. I really did. That I I posted bad. I was going to go get it, and he he was th- he'd already seen it and thought he was looking. Or but that no, was the push to get you to go look. Oh yeah, no. Oh oh no. I called him up and said Mike said he's going to go look at it. Mike Lee Austin is going to go look at it. I have money. I was on the way yeah. with yes, money in my hand. Yeah. Yes, you were. And you happen to live closer. <laughs> and I li- yeah. Fortunately, the guy lives like three miles from here. Oh, uh, yeah, you got no chance. I no. went down there and lo- well, no, I was gonna go. So what? It, it, and I'll, truth be told, I was gonna go look at it in the afternoon. Oh, I had stuff to do in the morning or whatever. And he's like, uh, Mike Lee yeah, Austin's I, on I his threw, way to go buy I threw buy you that. right under the bus. <laughs> Amen. And I was like, I, I called the guy. Out. And uh, and I was like, oh, I, I'm going to come over here a little bit early if that's all right or yeah. whatever. And, yeah, I, I bought it. I'd straight up. And what was that run? Him. You bought it for the run, right? I bought it for the go, go devil Do you need run. a go flat? Run, you can so. borrow mine whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to need better. it fr- to tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to get it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, don't I don't think I've touched it since, <laughs> since the end the, of the GDR. still packed. <laughs> the, guy, the guy that I bought that from, I kept in touch with him or whatever. He's since bought another flat fender. Mm. And oh. he's the one that owns that Chevy truck outside. Yeah. See, so. once after the Go Devil run, man, I was hell bent. You know that was going on. My goal was to make that run, no matter what. And sure. luckily, Drew was really putting in the time. You know what I mean. So he got. I had a great ride. Oh, it's awesome. It was Drew, a good time. Drew was great. That yeah. was well, great. And you didn't yeah. have to get your own vehicle last minute. Yeah, make sure and you it ended up with a bunch of little tweaks you had to do. Oh yeah, well the, the starter died the morning and in his yard <laughs> and never worked again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I got pushed all left. weekend. <laughs> yeah. I, I would that was I had to awesome. get started. Yeah. Where where is that Jeep now? Is, do you it's still in own the other it? garage. Oh yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. His nice. other garage, the second yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, of course. This one's not. It's the house garage. Oh yeah. <laughs> come oh, on, man. <laughs> so, this is prime time, it runs. bro. I take it to the parts store. It's fine. That's awesome. It's perfect. <laughs> That's funny. I should Dude, drive mine. Makes like I don't five pounds of oil pressure. It yeah. knocks. Ticks. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so um, your worst UA or the Go Devil Run, which one's better? Worst UA or the Go? Yeah, the Go like Devil Run was rad. The Go, well, Devil, the Go Devil, Devil Run was was, fun. was amazing. Yeah, it was a total shit show. Yeah, like from oh, the get go, fucking yeah. disaster. And, I mean, and, and that was seventy-year-old cars. Of, you know, some uh, half of them highly questionably maintained, right? <laughs> if at all. Oh, like, if at all. Um, the fact I that lost, I lost oil pressure, brakes. It wouldn't start, and there was a fourth thing that all happened in the space of about 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Literally, if I one vapor was locked about 4,000 times, <laughs> four, four to 4,000 times. When one broke down, that. it was contagious. Anything that pulled up and <laughs> yeah. stopped to it yes. also broke yeah. down. Yeah. But <laughs> as it turns out, if you don't, if like <laughs> the guy in front of you turns, <laughs> stops, and yeah. you're, if you've got a vapor lock problem, yeah. it's going to happen when you're not getting air through the radiator. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, are, there, there were guys that blew up coils. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. Does that, who does that? A who timing chain a spare? Broke, like <laughs> Well, it turns <laughs> out when you convert one to 12 volts and keep the six volt coil on it, eventually you will blow the oh. coil. Oh. Yeah. There was a reason for that, though, right? What's Did, that? Eric's, right? Is that the one you're talking about? Was that no, Eric's? Uh, no, that there was, was more than one. There were two. Oh. I think two coils blew up, yeah. and somehow people had spares. Yeah. That's yeah. the amazing <laughs> thing. Yeah. The other thing is like the last, like the last little stretch. We were at, we were at Table Mesa. Yeah. And Trent lost a U-bolt, and somebody, oh, had, right. a, somebody, <laughs> somebody had, had a fucking spare, spare yeah. U-bolt. <laughs> Who carries Thank spare Thank goodness U-bolts? it was yeah. Mike Dora it was actually the guy You're that right. had the U-bolt or whatever. But but he yeah, had but a couple but of What is that, a two-inch U-bolt? A, no, it's weird. It's oh, a, it's a, weird, kind of a size. weird size. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it probably is older than everybody yeah. was on the trip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you made and that big old climb with it, with it halfway hanging off and didn't even know it. No, it's fine. No brakes. Yeah. Dude, that was – yeah, that was – 
hands down, and, and probably if, the and best. And if I run. stalled it, I was screwed because there was no start in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have had to roll it down there. No, there was you no, can't, nobody. Uh, you can't like use the. You can't just start it in gear it in reverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, guess you I could, could do that. Jeez. Yeah. That's just a wreck waiting yeah. to happen. Oh yeah, no, totally. That's a good way to die. Yeah, that was an <laughs> awesome run. The way everybody just sort of like. There was points oh, where, where you and I were like, we're in the, we're, you're right behind us. We're right behind you at the very end. We're like, we go in the right way. We're like, we have no idea where anyone is, dude. Yeah. yeah. Then you just keep going. You know, do you, like, do you right. think that run was so good because it's just so much different than anything else we do? And it's yeah. challenging, old, dude, old, cool vehicles. I mean, there was zero tension. Everything was breaking left and right. Yeah. It was hot. There was so yeah. no one person felt bad for breaking down dude, no, because oh, just no. wait. Three Everybody, minutes it was and just the time to hang out down. and chat. It didn't yeah. matter. <laughs> it didn't matter, dude. Yeah, it was the. It was crazy. It was so. It was just. You can't even explain a run like that, yeah. really. But it was um, so much fun. I did miss because I was so zonked. You know, like at, at one point at the fire, I guess right after I left, you guys must have been. You were like stand-up comedian guy <laughs> from what i hear Dude, i was we I may was, or may not have gotten yelled at by bailey campbell to go to bed <laughs> yes <laughs> i think so i think so uh, i i that wasn't me but yes i do remember that <laughs> we did everything we were we kicked the windshield out because it broke we'd like we were driving with just the frame you know like trying to get because it was hot you had umbrellas up and yeah. i mean in my defense and and sorry bailey campbell but i did almost die that day yeah Jeez. <laughs> that's right <laughs> That is true. No comment. Are you allowed to talk about that yet? Or no. no. Okay. <laughs> Didn't happen. Put Didn't a roll happen. bar in a flat fender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Most of them don't have anything, right? Just a windshield mm -hmm. frame and. Yeah. And, Some of the guys took the bars out just yeah. to make it look authentic. Yeah. Oh, so yes. the whole goal with the GDR was um, you wanted to be able to take a picture at any given point during that trip and like turn it black and white and it would look like it was from the forest. Oh, okay. So that was like the, the, the goal Oh, that's was. right cuz people were even dressed the part. Oh yeah. Yeah, people totally. were yeah, it wasn't like Yeah, totally. and I know exactly what you're referring it, it, to. It, it, it spawned a ton of memes of like this was so far back oh, like yeah. last weekend. Is that going to be a <laughs> yearly event old, now? You know? Is that going to happen? I, it's, I think, I, as I think as far they're as I doing know. another one in Moab like who, over who is in charge of that? Uh, uh, well, Ian, Ian was the Ian, instigator yeah. of the whole of the original Ian GDR. Yeah, it, Lil Jablad. Oh, Lil Jablad. Is, is technically how you pronounce Good it. Good job. It's, yeah. it's, it's unpronounceable. Oh, okay. Lil, but, uh, Lil Jabal. Big, Big Willie Ian. Big, yes. Big Willie yeah. Ian. That there guy. There we go. Yeah, Lost that guy. Um, <laughs> what? With baby Ross blue. Lil Jablad? Yeah. Baby. Yeah. yeah. Lil, Lil Jablad. I believe it's Lil nice. Jablad. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> bald. <laughs> Lil Jablad. Bald Ian. Blad. So he happens to not have hair. That's fine. There's nothing against him. You're right. I, we love you, Ian. But anyway, he's, he's the one. Guy. He is a great guy. Uh, uh, he's the one that kind of instigated the original GDR. Um, he and I kind of, you know, uh, talked about routes or whatever. But uh, we and then we so pre -ran we, we pre-ran it, and the pre-run was almost as much fun oh as yeah. the actual. Yeah, event. you ended up in snow. You guys pre-ran it in the Willies. Yeah. In so Willies. you got to see if it's doable, right? The two of so. us were in my flat fender. Ian and his uh, girlfriend were in his. And then, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Cole, Cole Alford. Alford was in a 3A that was, uh, I think it's a 3A, but it's kind of modified. He was mm. a total cheater rig. It has yeah, like a 4.3 and an automatic. And oh, blah, yeah. Blah, yeah. Blah. AC. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> totally illegal. It won't illegal. be there next year. <laughs> totally illegal. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> totally illegal. <laughs> no, but he brought another one that was legal. Yeah. Yes. So. For the actual event, he had a legal uh, uh, mostly legal Look, some people have two willies jeeps shit some people got 10 two. that mike dora's got like 20 <laughs> yeah i know or something. i know I, i've got two one's at his house <laughs> you got a new one Another i have one? three because i've no. actually gotten a title to the one that he left <laughs> <in my house. laughs> so an here's open title i have a title i just don't have anything to go with the title oh gotcha. and plates oh no, you do <coughs> i, I do. didn't technically have a title for the one that i took on gdr i had a temp tag on it. you know dude, what's funny dude, is that was could, a 48 we could put you one together yeah can you i think so i got a tub yeah, see, and Drew keeps saying he's got all a bunch of parts, too, like a, f a frame. And the only thing I'm missing really is, I think, the engine to be able to snag one together. Oh, well, th that was I've it. Got, after that. I've got an engine for you. After that run, everybody was handing me all these things. I was like, no, I need a cheap-ass one like, <laughs> like you got. <laughs> and the uh, some dude in Texas just picked a beautiful green one up for 700 bucks. Damn. Damn. But in and Texas. It's, and running and beautiful. It's so, like So perfect. I paid $600 for mine with title issues and no engine. Yeah. In 1999? No, no, recently. no. This no, is another recent. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, only poor people have one flat under. <laughs> 15, <laughs> 1,500 is Jeez. that's the number I, I'm, I'm looking for. Yeah. 1,500, and I don't I, care if it's I, all in parts, dude. That's what I want. It's 1,500, yeah. no more. I used to I used to have a, 
a flat out rule that if you had a flat fender that didn't run, I would not pay you. I would pay a thousand dollars or yeah. less. It was a thousand dollar rule on flat fenders. Yeah, and that you, you used to be able to do that, and now it's I think out the window. I paid. <clears throat> I think I paid twenty two hundred for mine, and it didn't have a title. I just a bill of sale or whatever. I had to get a I had to get a bonded title or whatever. I think Mike's got a title for twenty three hundred, <laughs> which is <laughs> super easy to do in Arizona, fortunately. But yeah. um, oh, okay. and then I had to wire it, and I had to fix like a whole bunch of little stuff. Yeah, like he a leaks the car bought, leaks. He bought it. Stuff. He yeah. bought it and had it running later the same day. And you know what's funny is I I I say that the the flat vendor picks you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, some of them will be. They'll look or they'll send them. People send it to me. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I can just tell by the picture. I don't want any part yeah. of that. Yours was one that I really yeah. wanted, but it actually fits you. It's perfect. I it. You Thank know what you. I mean? Yeah. Like it be, it's yours. It sorry, yours. I'm when sorry, you know, Mike. When, yeah, this this, I, this may, really, may really always do. be a bone of contention. <laughs> but I, I really do feel bad about it. You I shouldn't mean, do. To a point. I feel right. bad to too, but, but but hey, as long as that's it's a good Trent's s- flat fender, goddamn it's it, a, it's, it's a good, right. It's a good flat fender. So as long as it's a good story, I don't care. Here's what I've learned today. You're not getting on UA. You're not getting that flat fender. <laughs> you're not. You, you that is were, not. That you is not true. Had, that is absolutely not true. You have not, not had one beer here. You probably, you know, there's probably a rule against that or something. And no, I'm just on some <laughs> dumb so- sober October. This would be. This is probably, probably better yeah. that I'm not drinking because oh, okay. otherwise I'd be slurring and tell, oh, talking oh. all over everyone. Kind <laughs> of so. like me. Is that what you're saying? That's right, man. You guys are a bunch yeah, of dickheads. Sure, That's awesome. Sure, 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 sure. All right. So, <laughs> should we get back to back other on track. stuff? I, I, I've been trying to ask this. I do want to ask this. What, out of all the vehicles you guys have built, not to go back to get off on the fun stuff, but what's the best upgrade you've ever done? What is the best upgrade? Maybe even done? something that you look to do on every build. I tell you, okay, I've got a weird one, and this isn't going to be what you'd expect, even from me. Oh, I want to hear this. But the buggy uh, over there had just regular old headlights in it. And they were awful, 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 awful. The single best upgrade I have ever done to that car in terms of like night and day literally change was I put rigid headlights in it. Oh, wow. I, I no and longer it like you, Trent. Was, <laughs> and the it thing's was back half. Mind bogglingly different. Like, I mean, the, it, it, it was like going yeah. from candles to actually being able to see. And I actually, so I like them so much, I put them on the Scout. <clears throat> but and I actually took a lot of flack because, oh, those are those stupid yeah. LED or whatever. I was like, use them, yeah. use yeah. them yeah. one they, uh, time. They truck lights? No, are they rigid? Well, they're, ri- well, oh. they're rigid truck lights. Didn't didn't you have the same exact thing on your Willys? I have it right now. I'm looking at his. The only thing cool about these lights, I have the same ones that you have on there now. Is they look good in pictures? They look good yes, in pictures. Look those good those pictures. lights that suck. Yeah. They they <laughs> they illuminate to about yeah. That's a candle, right? bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right know. about right. Oh, I know. Yeah. But you have some nice right square here. LED pods. I've seen you use them on the road. Oh, yeah. I no, mean, I, yeah, I got the rigid lights down. But, there. but, but I mean, bar. in terms of just like night and day, yeah. Yeah. 100% really. difference, that's probably. It makes you fine to drive at night, man, with these yeah. little fucking yeah. things. You're spooky. I just got the $100 Amazon LED, seven inch mm-hmm. round, fits a Harley, fits a Jeep, fits a go kart, you know? <laughs> but, um,. I, same thing like they're very bright and now that mine also do this mm. so like all the signs you know they're fl- everything's flickering and doing uh, its own you probably thing, need some new head but let yeah. like it's to i'm, I'm gonna broken. go with locker a yeah. locker yeah. i yeah. think locker. lockers are are, are rad lockers so any vehicle rad. you guys will build minimal has to have one to two so lockers, the first like, thing i did no, when i bought the, the flat fender oh. that i stole from mike <laughs> is i put a locker in it i put Ooh. a locker in the back isn't that did cheating? they have one on the run you yeah. put it. Oh, oh yeah. really? Oh, uh, cheater, cheater track. Oh. We all oh. cheat. That's the thing. Cheaters <laughs> like, <laughs> track. Track. No, like Ian is the worst. Guess what? Ian's Ian has 15 inch wheels. That Jeep did not Jeez. come with 15 inch. Wheels. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we should beat his ass. <laughs> his best buddy worked for Motive Gear and <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's got lockers in it. Yeah. yeah. Front and rear. What's that called when everyone's upgrading the old Willys and it's secretive? Isn't badass. It? Cheating. No, isn't there it's a called name locker for stalker. cheating? Oh, locker stalker. Or <laughs> I think it's just cheating. Oh, okay. cheating. I uh, thought it had a, a real term in in the in the you industry. You know, the, the trick is like what Ryan Miller did. He comes up with that aluminum tie rod to throw your your whole eye towards it, so yeah. you don't notice all the other <laughs> shit that's wrong. <laughs> that's the, changed. The open knuckle yeah. and the disc brakes, <laughs> and the bill steens and the Bilsteins, wheel spacers uh, and disc brakes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you painted your radiator though, right? I did. Yes, Trent. Yeah, he got I a high school illegal yeah. radiator. <laughs> well, it, it it came that way. The guy bought it for a hundred bucks. Hey, did I, I am the only guy that didn't overheat or vapor lock right. on the entire GDR. or needed the pump? But it's, I did. It's part of the, part I, of the uh, 
yeah. ambiance. I did. You, you I didn't did experience li- the trip then. No, right. Well, no, I had plenty of. Other <laughs> you needed issues. a secondary car to start. I had, had plenty of other issues. <laughs> I, I legitimately had to pull the radiator out for some reason. I don't remember why now, but I was like, "Oh, this something's just going black." <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't want to I always thought that would have Robert Ke- Keller come in from Florida to start to be a starter during the event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, That's he, how was he here? He stayed. Yeah, yeah he, he stayed here. At the he's house. The squ- he was on the UA in the square he, body, right? Flat out. Yeah. His flat fender was parked right where you're sitting. He oh. drove out from Florida to go on this. Yeah. yeah. Go down wow. the run. It's a hell of a run. It was a hell of a good run. It was cool, and I think I don't know. I mean, part of it may have been everybody was kind of. Uh, Stir crazy from I COVID think it was. And That's and a good like point. I mean, we were all kind of like nobody I, gone anywhere. Yeah, the Easter Jeep Safari canceled. got canceled. Yeah. 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 I was kind of I think that we had the wife and I had a discussion about whether whether I should go or not. I'm yeah. sure as hell glad I did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that but was none of us knew at that point. Like we all could have died of Ebola later yeah. that week. <laughs> it was. It would have been worth it. I'd have been happy. I'd, I'd have been it fine. Would have been great. Yeah. yeah, that was a damn good time. Yeah, and out of all of them, I don't know if it's because I wasn't driving and you can just relax on yeah. that side. Do you know what I mean? That's huge <laughs> so to, to just to get to hang out. Of my wasn't was wasn't there a down. hand job involved too? Yeah, yeah, yeah lots there of was them. A hand job. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. And then I did have to do like a two mile walk because I didn't put the gas cap back on, and, uh-huh. I, and I knew it. He's like, "Oh man, we lost the gas cap," and I was like, "Fuck, I know exactly where it's at." <laughs> so <laughs> I just started walking. While so the crew is out. going that slow. You could walk two miles back, pick it up, and come back. No, we were having problems with the fuel tank. We were clogging oh. like every two hundred feet. This it was is the oh, first right. day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, didn't see a lot of you guys the first. Day. Or no, the <laughs> second day you guys like. Stayed in camp. We had to fix it, yeah, because yeah. we had we had to figure out the fuel issue because it wasn't going to make it back. I mean, you didn't miss anything. I don't think we ever. Yeah, we did. We missed a lot of fun hanging oh, out drinking. Dude, yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, you nobody, were supposed to go do DeSoto Mine, and you ended up just nobody drinking actually at the lake. locked the, the the hubs, <laughs> so, and we just dicked oh, off. Oh, what, what lake? Uh, the Horse Thief Horseshoe? Basin. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's, I've been there. I, we, me, and you walked around it. Yeah, it's yeah. cool how it's yeah. a huge. Um, and for basin. everybody who <laughs> lives. Outside of Arizona, this is not a lake. It's no. a pond. Yeah. It's a, pond. Yeah. It's a large it's, pond. It's yeah. very cool. It's a big pond, but it's a pond. It's like, what, eight acres or 12 acres? Or I think I you and I walked exactly. around it's it in an less than 10 minutes. A, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. One. I don't know. That's way off. One square. It's small. Acre. It's small. not yeah. very big. You, you skip get, a rock and it comes there? out of the lake? You no, probably, we can't. You might be able to skip a rock across it. Crown King, when you go up and you make that first... So you get to that first intersection, right? Oh, so yeah, up, it's up the at first top. one where the the where the senator highway. Where the center, yeah, where you yeah. actually intersect the senator highway. Yep, yep, yep. Directly across from that is a fairly large camp area. That's actually where Ultimate Adventure camped as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Giving away the secrets, huh? Whatever. Nice. Well, I just knew where it was. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, it was all secret before the event, but not mm-hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Now, one year I saw. Weren't you guys giving out the GPS route after the event? If like if people so wanted to see it, or I mean, no one's gonna go do it on their own, or very unlikely. That's happened. Well, I was thinking about that. You know, like the four of us could get together and do the Arizona UA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That section. Um. So yeah, I think Magellan has. No, we could do the whole thing. Magellan has done. Yeah, yeah. we could totally do the whole thing. Oh, so what were they a Magellan, sponsor? They the were a sponsor year? that okay. year. I believe that they published the route. Um. On Onyx Off Road. Uh, this year was a sponsor, and so we used their app um, during the event itself, mm-hmm. and I believe that's available online. Interesting. Excuse so me, only the la- well. there's only a couple of years like that where this has been an option. Right. Right. Well, yeah. you definitely have gotten more posty, like more more social mm-hmm. media f- over the last couple of years for sure. Where you might get out of the town and then you can post yesterday's shit. You yeah. Know so I mean? that's yeah. sort of a that's one of the rules that they tell you when ultimate adventure starts which is basically oh. don't don't out us don't tell anybody where we're at and you can post whatever you want as soon as we the as day soon after as we've okay. left or gotcha. the day after. and and it's and it's the problem is is like uh, because social media has become so pervasive or mm-hmm. whatever the the problem is and and we actually had it happen the last day where a guy this is a prime example um we were on a trail Somebody had posted, we had a rollover, and so they posted the, the, the picture of the rollover or whatever, yeah. and it wasn't a big deal or whatever, but the guy recognized the obstacle and came out and like th- with three or four of his buddies. Yeah. And so we've had it happen where 
that somehow it gets out that where we're going to be and then it's an absolute shit show yeah. for in terms of trail traffic and locals yep. and stuff like that and this year was especially hard because of the whole covid question mm-hmm. where we were i mean it was it was crazy strict for us this year i mean we were doing twice daily temperature checks wow. everybody yeah i saw you, you know, all, all that stuff so like i mean it's i mean and, and that's what we we did what we had to do we were taking it seriously because th- this was the first event that anybody anybody had had ever done yeah but so really, but it be, but it added a it, that it whole added a whole different level of urgency yeah. to the secrecy part of it because we don't want a bunch of these random well you don't want like in. some seven super spreaders walking up and <laughs> infecting <laughs> the whole crew exactly. you know? well, I, mean, I mean i mean for real <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so um so but that but that's the main reason for the secrecy is that we do have to keep the group moving mm-hmm. and and all that stuff it's not we're not trained to be elitist or anything like that. No, of I course. mean, we no, no, love nothing better than just have everybody in the world come out or whatever, but we'd never get anywhere. I do have to admit, so. uh, I almost showed up to Temple Mesa and was like, hey, what are you guys <laughs> doing out here, you man? Totally, you would have been fine. <laughs> I think you I totally may or may not have told you to do that. Um, nope. You didn't. No, I didn't? No. no. no I, I really did think about it. I was like, hey, totally guys. <laughs> I know I'm, it's I'm Monday. Sorry, I, sh- I, I should, know I've always will in Table Mesa. should have. I should have told Monday. you. To I, didn't, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I should have. I mean, and that so. would have been that would have been fine. Um, no, I abided by the rules, man. I stayed, yeah. t- I stayed out of the way. But we had a couple guys. I mean, there was a guy this year that I know really well, personally, that's a local to the last day trail or whatever. And I had to be kind of like, I, oh, and I ran into him. Oh, I happened to mad. run into him. I was, at, I was at dinner when this guy came hey, Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, that's a different guy. Okay. Um, no, but uh, no, his buddy. The, the, uh, the, the guy I'm referring to, I was pulling out of like the local Jason Polly of um, why can I not remember uh, uh, throttle, throttle, right throttle, throttle down throttle customs down. Uh, no not that's not right no uh, it'll come to me in a second anyway Jason Polly um, big time we there a long time it, it, he's kind of the go to guy in South Dakota and yeah. I was leaving his shop in the scout wow. and this buddy I know is coming the opposite direction oh, no. like stops or whatever and i was like hi and he's like yeah. what are you doing here they and i said this is during the pre-run and i was like things i can't talk about this is like yeah. when you go yeah. pre-run the alaska trip in a bright yellow range rover yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's one of the things that and we learned might be a tip off that, and it was that like, was dumb <laughs> yeah and so uh anyway but even he is, I mean, he's a great guy. And he ended up coming out as a helper on the trail anyway. But I kind of had to keep him at arm's length just because yeah. of all the COVID mm-hmm. stuff and everything. So. Well, back to this uh, one more thing. I just want to let you guys know. So if people apply and then they don't apply for a few years, it doesn't mean they don't want to go. Keep applying. <laughs> it just means just that maybe they have money issues that year and they can't oh, afford applying. it. No, and, and, and <laughs> the funny thing, like you, you bring that up. So Derek Lassini, who was on this year's yep, trip the blue with that truck. blue uh, Chevy 1500 yeah. crew cab or uh, 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 Silverado, or cab yeah. Silverado, Bond. it's a rad yeah. truck. Yeah, he was the one. He was the one that we were going to invite. Invite to he would have gone to he would have been invited to Alaska. Oh, okay. But he got married, and so he didn't send his application in. Right, there. and it was his personal decision, and I'm sure it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, but but how cool that he reapplied right and he it was legitimately he got, like he was I don't re- oh it's because we were in I think the year before was in Illinois uh, no, been in, East Coast I don't I feel like he's in I Chicago think, yeah I think that he was we were worried that he was gonna like just beat that truck to death yeah if he went on it because <laughs> of where that's we a were nice, going that's a nice truck with a big well body. and I think he hadn't added a bunch of I stuff don't think like he hadn't bobbed, bobbed it the bed he hadn't added rock sliders yes. yeah and, and we were like this is a nice truck it's cool but but it will it's gonna it get will destroyed. get destroyed on ultimate yeah. adventure and we're that's not the and point there's, of yeah. ultimate there's adventure. always a few of those applicants that i mean it's like you can just kind of tell by the rig it's like these guys really don't know what they're getting oh, okay into. Yeah. <laughs> you know Especially so. full size ones when every full uh, size is normally I mean, been there. I mean, there's been some Jeeps that it's like this guy doesn't really. Dude, know what he's when I saw the guys too. that made the van, I was like, oh my god, yeah, you got to have balls awesome, so to that's take an off road. So, 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 so that's kind, kind of a, a dirty little secret. Yeah, that's sort of a uh, <laughs> that's sort of a red herring. That's a guy that that uh, that's like Chris Durham. Chris Durham, it's one of Chris Durham's best buddies. Oh, okay. Travis Farmer. Chris Durham is a crony, by the way. Yeah. yeah. He's if good. you know who Chris Durham is, you know. 
awesome builds. Yeah. yeah. So Chris yeah. Chris helped build that van and trap like. You don't have to worry Travis, about Travis. Travis has been to Moab several times. I, I've, I've known that Travis. Band? No, oh, no, okay. no, in different cars or whatever. But Travis is just a cool-ass dude. And, and I mean, when you apply with a van <laughs> right. yeah, and so it's like, on 40s, <laughs> yeah. I, and it's I totally actually, cool. I assumed yeah. it was like a parts vehicle or like something in the, like it was holding like camera gear or I don't know. No, what it was. He, no, he, he uh, wheeled that thing everywhere we he went. He wheeled the dog shit out of it really? I think. as a matter of fact so <laughs> i think i think so so the last day when the scout flopped i think he was right not ahead my of scout the, not yeah. your scout uh i think he was the car in front of it and okay. i was taking pictures of it and uh uh just yeah rad. i think works really well oh, dude yeah. it works well and so uh so anyway i'd heard about this van <laughs> and you know the van the van got in or whatever and i know travis but it, but i know travis but it's not like i have a cell number right yeah. and so but i have chris's and i had finished the second pre-run and uh ken smith had come out uh, ken one of the other cronies had come out to help him for a week that's ken he's like fly 64 yeah, or ken fly 64 or nine yeah. or whatever it is um uh, he had come out and he's like, yeah, Travis doesn't really care about that van at all. As a matter of fact, he's actually gone ahead and proactively replaced all the side windows with Lexan. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, that's cool. <laughs> Whatever. And he's like, but he's not going to put rock sliders on. He's like, uh, he had to put rock sliders on. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no, he really doesn't care. And I was like, well, yeah, but those sliding doors, yeah. uh, when they, when it gets tagged enough, those don't open and shut. And that's actually kind of handy. Yeah, not so look. much dented up body but like doors that open and doors shut. Yeah. doors that open i and th- so one of the uas that i went on i rode with fred <laughs> williams in a truck where the like he banged it into a door <laughs> blame me for it and the door didn't open the whole trip uh, my fat ass climbed in and out of that thing. orange <laughs> dodge truck the tug truck huge, the huge one <laughs> yeah so like for the whole week <laughs> i think funny. i lost 10 pounds Did, was it a bench so, or a bucket seats you couldn't just slip through no, they were. It was like Please. a mastercraft seats. Oh, I mean, okay. they were nice. Seats. Yeah, you're not slipping through. No, you yes. weren't sliding through. I no. was in and out the window. Like I got <laughs> yeah. so I could do it fast. And you you got to jump down like four or five feet. Oh from, yeah, no, from it was totally, it was really <laughs> tall. So so anyway, so I I text I'm pretty Durham. agile. I'm kind of like a uh, uh, Chris Farley, like you know, oh, can right. move around like fat <laughs> guys. You're like a, a dolphin. He's got some serious sort of moves. fat, but still can't, athletic. Can't, <laughs> can't, can't like speed <laughs> reflexes. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, so anyway, back to the van. I I texted Durham and I'm like, uh, Travis really ought to think about putting some rock yeah. sliders on this thing. And apparently they had just sat down to lunch. And Durham was like, We need to put rock sliders on the van. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Did you? And it showed up with rock sliders on it. That, that was a very good Chris Durham. Uh, I I also really like the um the really bright colored I think it's like an Isuzu oh no no it's a uh, Suzuki mm, su- Suzuki Trooper. Brody Bots oh. yeah Brody Brody and uh and Mark from Mark uh, I don't remember Mark's last name Mark uh God bless America I know it it's kind of like me and Jason Polly's shop what does it matter if with you me? hadn't said I don't remember his name you I had just, it. <laughs> sorry <laughs> but that thing sorry was, Mark it was very capable oh. right I mean it was oh, fully dude. built oh it's he awesome. was following me on that crawler. last day yeah and like walking that yeah yep. that he calls it the side chick <laughs> that's, that's that's side did he drive it the whole way or he yes. trailered it because he showed uh, up no, at he, dave's he, house no, right yeah. he uh he drove yeah, it, no, from, they san drove it. Yeah. from san diego yeah is, is that another shop owner guy that yes he is he's, he's a he's, he's a idle idle hands yeah. fabrication now, now that i shop. follow him i notice he posts a lot of information about like the gearing and similar so he, he must be like a isuzu uh Suzuki. He's Suzuki. just a good wheeler. So I, keep I, mean, I can't think of Mark's last name, but I can do a pretty good impersonation <laughs> oh, yeah. of him. Is that how he talks? He does. He's yeah. kind of like, have you seen yeah. this picture of my Suzuki? Mark's rad. He's so going to punch me guys, in the face when he sees this. Those, those, guys were, like those guys were a hoot from the <laughs> get-go. I mean, you just look at that thing and start laughing. I mean, it's the the whole story about like uh, when the thing got painted. I uh-huh. mean, so like they're in San Diego, and so they went to – he's done some work for like this lowrider shop, and this lowrider <laughs> shop – when it, you know, he goes to this lowrider place. This when I should do an offensive uh, accent. And uh, it, well, it's time to start yeah. wheeling. <laughs> no, and he's like, he's like, you're going to hell. He's Mike. like, uh, all right, you know, I want, I want like '80s show truck. Yes. He's like, I don't know, Pin man. Striped. I don't the know, lace. man. Oh, now and, Trent's doing an offensive like, voice. Ah, no, no, no. But, but he's like, 
He's got he's, the pompadour. He said, he said how, how much time do I have? Yeah. And he's like, uh, you got like three or four days tops. And he's like, <laughs> okay, you leave it with me, man. And like, so he had me. no they, clue what they, he was getting. They, uh, I hadn't heard this I story. Think, I think he said that I think it, the, the, the pink had already been discussed. But other than that, it was just, I want 80 show truck tastic. Wow. That's what I want. And nice. those guys. And it, oh, and by All the way, I've got, like, I've got like 500 bucks to spend. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. of course. So yeah. I, I those heard, guys knocked it I out heard of the park. People with Jeeps were pissed that there was a multicolored Suzuki in a van on Ultimate Adventure. <laughs> Who cares, dude? <laughs> like, that's awesome. If you want Variety. to go on Ultimate Adventure, Take build notes. a van. Right. <laughs> build a van. <laughs> or a multicolored. Well, it's too late. Some, someone's kick. already done it now. And so then, think it's And then new. wheel the dog shit out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally sitting there in the shower going, I don't know what car would is a guarantee shoe in. You know what I mean? Like, I was trying to think. I was like, what is the most r- – because everything has been built, and then that thing shows up. I was thinking And then the other guy shows this. up in a van. I was like, holy shit. I don't think there's ever been a Nissan Patrol on Ultimate Ooh. Adventure. Ooh. They never – well, what, did they sell them for two years in the two U.S.? Two or three years, but I've seen them on Craigslist. Yeah. But they're it. not cheap. I, isn't Meh. that basically like your S10? Like a uh, two-door, well, four-door kind of like – like oh, a, a Land Rover. There's never been a series. Oh. That one from Advanced Adapters. I don't remember the guy's name that worked there or whatever, but the one that the blue one. Look, or whatever, Land Rover series and Defender Land Rovers are fucking rad. Yeah. yeah, but you said don't buy a Land Rover because they're so damn expensive. Every part they're on awful. them is Well, expensive. and they're terrible. They're <laughs> awful, awful, awful cars. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, you he's rip everything out with the body and the frame. The, the yeah. Range Rover was a rad car. Because Once of how you built it. Only because... We got rid of everything but it the body and the frame. It was <laughs> super, super but photogenic. It was thoroughly un- but, well, but it's the same thing as this thing. Yeah. These are terrible, too. They're awful cars. <laughs> the Scout. You're, I wasn't going to say everybody it. Everybody on the internet's going to hate Trent. <laughs> <laughs> nah. It's fine. They're, to- they're terrible. There's a reason Scout or International quit making light trucks oh. in 1980. Oh, boy. <laughs> them them yeah, bike words there. Right. Uh, I... I I think that I like that scout. That scout's rad. I I like the scout. Yeah, because of how you built it. I you like took the scout. out here's, all the Here's the worst part about the scout. One of the coolest things on the scout is the cage. Like Yes. I don't I'm I like, agree I with don't, it. Like, I don't it's my always, favorite part. Yeah. I don't always knock it out of the park when I build a roll cage. I fucking knocked it out of the park when I yeah. built that, that roll cage. Yeah. My favorite it's part sexy. of this car is He's the never roll taken cage. the top off. And I've of never it. taken the top I've off. I've seen a I'm few cage photos during the build updates that you guys were doing and it did look awesome. But um, I, I, you're right. I don't recall, or it doesn't stand out. It's so hidden. So there's hmm. like a you were talking about the like 20 part build series for the LJ. There's actually a seven or eight part build on the Scout for anybody that's interested in what's yes. involved with it. Also, there are two. Yes, four on four wheeler. Four wheeler dot com. The best thing probably to do is to Google Ultimate International. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Ultimate Adventure. Do you also use a hashtag on anything you post with it? Or uh, Ultimate International. Ultimate International. Yeah. It wheels great too, huh? Dude, I totally thought that Look, this it, thing was going to be wheels better. Of, it wheels better than either of us thought it would. I, yeah. I, I really thought it was going to be kind of a penalty box because it, you know, leaf spring, spring mm-hmm. under. We did that. We kind of pushed the easy button because it, again, it had to come together pretty fast. So that's why we just that's kept it, keep it simple, stupid, and in terms of the suspension. Yep. It we this thing is every bit as capable as that coilover buggy over there. Wow, yeah. every bit. And the, and this Jeep, I mean, like the two of them, these two rigs will go anywhere. Yeah, and, I mean, both of them will do the exact same thing. Yeah, hmm. it's it's pretty remarkable. I think it's heavy. Anybody venture to guess? Take a wild oh, that's guess. That's a good one. Take a wild guess what this thing weighs in full UA battle dress. Right, which means in full UA. Which w- in full UA battle dress, which means tools, spares, camping gear. You in it? Me in it, full tank of fuel. I'm full not fridge, in it. That's another. Don't say a number yet. Hold on. Mike and I are big into how much our Jeep weighs, and I know one day my Jeep will be lighter than Mike's. You know, there's a whole thing we got going on. Forever we were competing, and who could air up and down the fastest. So, what do you think? What do you think the ultimate international weighs? Fifty nine fifty. You're not far. Don't say anything, though. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need no, yeah, don't a chance. Don't here. say anything. He was going to be in the fours. No, I, I was I was definitely because I know <laughs> how a, heavy. Are we doing uh, uh, prices right? Prices yeah, right. Price is right. <laughs> yeah, one. I'm <laughs> one, one pound. <laughs> mainly because of the steel body, how how 
it, I could assume the body is so insanely heavier than anything else. And the, the cage, the axles, I'm going to go 61 plus. I almost went you, into the sixes. What did you wow. say? Wow. Because I know you have like 22 grade A bolts holding the rear bumper on. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you, guys, you guys are actually really, <laughs> yeah. really, really close. Yeah, you so guys are the, all over it. So but we're talking right, fully loaded. Too. Oh, yeah. We're I talking mean, fully loaded yeah. with me in it. Yeah. Um, so under Price is Right rules, Mike <sighs> wins. But you're actually technically closer at nice. 6,050 pounds. Wow. And well, that, that was is, on a certified scale. I almost scale. said 650, too. Damn. 6,050. Six, that was 6, my original 50. thought. I've oh, only... Damn. See, the I've rover only, uh, is more. The, the, the rover was 6,200. Jeez. That is insane. That's, that blew my mind. Yeah. Like, if you... If you these R two point eights are not LSs. Like you're not going to no. be doing smoky burnouts. <laughs> uh-uh. But that Rover weighs sixty two hundred pounds. That's yeah. a big car. That's w- a would lot. Would you say of the truck. engine is very heavy? That it comes in? not it's the engine, but the engine moves the thing around just yeah. fine. Yeah. Like it'll do. Oh, yeah. That Rover will do eighty on the highway. Well, and I think the engine That's weighs cool. itself. I think it weighs. 550, 575, which mm. is the equivalent of a small block. I you guys are getting block. crazy I, gas mileage, right? I think Mid-20s? it's a little bit heavier uh, than a small block. Well, I think it's five, like 575. The average small block, I think, is 525, like an iron-headed small block. Yeah, I think the, sh- the shipping weight on that's more than that. Well, but that's the crate and the computer. And sure. mm-hmm. uh, mm. Oh, mileage. Um, this I, I haven't kept really good track, but it's gotten... As bad as 16, and that's actually running like 80, 85, yeah. and stuff like that. Jeez. And it's gotten as good as 20. So would you say high RPMs running it on the highway uh, yes, rapidly decreases absolutely. all of a sudden? You you run this thing at 55, uh, you know, or whatever, and it'll 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 break down Some, 20, 21 miles Something happens at 65 miles an hour. Yeah. Right. right there, things get really inefficient. Yeah. So really, you would want an extra gear or so in... An extra overdrive. You, you it's not even that. It's, it's just, just it's just, it just. Oh, okay. It yeah. Just, hmm. It's not like it's working. It's not you could up gear. It's just it's working that hard. Yeah. You know, not, mm. now that you're rebuilding your willies with the front Dana sixty, and so many things have changed, and so many things have changed on my Liberty. I think we're going to need to do a reway one of these days. And with us in it, you've fully definitely loaded. been shedding a lot more weight, and I've been I'm adding trying, weight. I'm trying to shed weight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, mine I mean, was setting at fifty one hundred loaded. These yeah. axles are. Insane axles. Yeah. Are axles insane. add up, add yep. weight yep. fast. But hey, but unsprung. Be- I'm happy about unsprung. You sure, know, but um, sure. you know, a big old bobblehead on top. Hmm. Well, <laughs> and I don't mind it. You can't break these axles. I, I yeah. contend. That well, but Corby did. Yeah, Cor- are, are Corby can break the, anything. Are those the ultimate Dana sixties? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Are those that ones XBL, new? Or did you get those them off SBL seventy X joints, which are the the axle joints, they are. They are enormous. I have one laying around here yeah. that I can show you. But I mean, it's. Are you? Is it not the standard like fourteen eighty Dana no. sixty? It's enough. It's like a fifteen fifty like or something. The, it's the. I think it's in, it's in the late model super duties, isn't it? I think well, it's it, a fifteen fifty. Yeah. It's equivalent to a fifteen fifty drive shaft U joint. Wow. It's, it's, it's I mean, gigantic. It's I mean, enormous. they're huge. Yeah. They fit on a regular. It's as 60? big as Trent's hand. Yeah, yeah. D- Daryl switched his uh, Ford sixties hmm. to the fifteen fifties. <laughs> they make they make Dang. them. But <laughs> we, they were over there cracking dick jokes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think the hard part for you would be finding the axle shafts with that size of a. Um, and the length you need them. The yeah. length, yeah. Because oh. for Ford now, that's like that's the stock replacement. It's yeah. fifteen fifty. <laughs> so um, yeah, they're so that, enormous. That's the other thing about the. So the Fords have that big joint in there. Yeah. I think twenty twelve in the Dodge and the AAMs also have that giant joint. joint. They don't make them custom for the Chevy 60. I think you can get anything custom. Well, you got. but what, what you would do is just you got the money. do RCV at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah RCVs da- are every bit as strong. Dana 60 RCVs are big money. Yeah. There's a set right over there. <laughs> oh, well. oh, I was looking for a pair. Do you really? <laughs> How come we're not robbing him? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sorry, never mind. Right. Sorry, those are for a uh, Ford. I wish yeah. I had a remote control light <laughs> to kill all the lights real fast. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Wake up editing. all sweaty. It's Mike, editing. Mike, <laughs> Mike throws down some things. <laughs> right, right out of him to smoke. <laughs> like a ninja. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss part two of our interview with the ultimate adventure gurus, Trent and Vern. <laughs>